throughout my buffer years, I fantasized about having a time machine. Right. And going back that I could be by one more Fabring right. as a buffer, as an 18-year-old, as a 17-year-old, you know, just to be part of it, to stand at adult level and to have, or to, or to go into Yechidus, or to have just one moment. And I was in deep, deep anguish. And when I talk about it now, I, it, it still invokes right. a lot of feelings. Welcome to Homesick for Lubavitch a podcast where we explore Lubavitch identity in the year 2024. My name is Ben Siafson, and I will be your host. Let's begin. Alrighty, we're here with uh, Rabbi Moshe Greenwald from Los Angeles. Um, I know I know Moshe's brothers pretty well. I was in the yeshiva with Zevi. I know Shlemi, we do work together. But I also know Moishi from a ways back. Uh, there were a couple summers that you were driving or h- hanging around my grandfather. Yeah. Uh, up and down to camp in Philadelphia, and New York. Um, you know, for those who have who didn't spend time with him on the road back in those days, it's hard to convince you <laughs> the, the kind of driving and the amount of driving that was going on. We but, had a lot of adventures. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll get to that too. But that's yeah. not what you're here for today. I do want to. I, I, I want to hear your story. I, we already started talking about it ahead ahead of time and today, and it's really interesting. But I want to. I want to frame it with a moment that I remember, an encounter that I had with you. I just want to kind of. For some reason, I feel like I want to start with that moment. And that was so we had met in the summer when I think you were still single. Um, then you got married, obviously. And then I remember being in Khan's supermarket. For some reason, I remember this like yesterday, and I don't have photographic memory. I don't remember everything that happened in my life. But I remember like yesterday, I'm in Khan's, and Moshe Greenwald, who I know well, like, I, I know, you know who I am, I know who you are, but we're, we're like, you're older than me, or in like, you know, close friends. You come into Khan's, bursting with excitement, and I think you gave me a big hug. He told me you just got accepted or you just got a place for Schlichus in California. And you had to like, uh, you had to start raising money. I think that was a tonight. You had to raise money before you set out. You were like on a cloud nine. I don't, I don't remember this. <laughs> wow. I remember it like yesterday. And uh, I, I just think that's, uh, you know, it's interesting. That, that to me, to be honest, that was the last I remember of you until you... You know, you heard about the podcast and you heard a couple episodes and you reached out to me. And I think that was that was the next time we spoke between those two encounters. So I think we had I, a couple of uh, Facebook uh, encounters back in the day when I was uh, active on Facebook. But it's been a long time. Was it about the Sefer Torah? No, no. Oh, what? Uh, like, like, like back and forth, maybe. Yeah. yeah, those were fun times. Yeah, for face, Facebook was a fun time. Um yeah, but no, I'm saying in, in like in person, like 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 real conversation or real right. moments. The 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 I remember that moment in Cannes, and then I remember I remember uh, and then we started talking about the about this podcast, and I think that's an interesting framing. I think right. just for you and me, I think we both know where that where that kind of lands us. But um, we'll get back to it in the conversation. I just wanted to make sure that I kind of put it out there. So I don't remember this encounter, but I must. It was right after I I, I got the shlichus. It must have been like within hours. Wow. Yeah. 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 I uh, I fought hard for that <laughs> shlichus. <laughs> right. I got married and started looking right away. Um, immediately to start to try to find something, and my wife and I looked into a bunch of places, and it was probably close to a two and a half year ordeal until we finally got it. Right. And it was not, it was not easy to, to, to land the Schlichus. Right. And today you're still there. I'm still there. Yeah. In downtown Los Angeles. Downtown Los Angeles. Downtown Los Angeles. Yeah. So I think that's an interesting moment to kind of put on the table and we'll get back to it. Okay. Um, so why don't you start with your, you know, why don't you tell it, why don't you tell us where you're from and where you grew up and, I grew up in uh, Long Beach, California. Right. My father is a shliach. My parents are shluchim there. 
Um, they moved out a couple months before I was born, uh, 1981. And you're the eldest? I'm the oldest, yeah. Right. Like you, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's a special package. <laughs> it's a different podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah, I grew up in, uh, in a interesting community. Long Beach is a very interesting community. Right. So Long Beach, um, when Long Beach was started in the 60s, it became a, um, a exemplar example. It became, it became uh, one of the, 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 the prime jewels of Lubavitch. Why? Because they had made a bunch of balichovas. Mm -hmm. um, and successful Balichovas. Who's they? Rabbi Newman? It started with, with uh, Rabbi Pekarsky. Who, Rabbi Fryer? Yeah. Oh, yeah? He was there, um, and he, he got it launched, and then under him was uh, uh, Gershon Schusterman, mm -hmm. um, and then Rabbi Newman, Rabbi Engel. Um, I believe they came within a few years of each other, um, but they came out in the 60s, mm -hmm. and they were very, very Matzliach, in, um, in, in winning over <laughs> right. a, a group of young, dynamic doctors and attorneys, a lot of doctors, there were a lot of doctors, a lot of the kids who I was friends with, their parents were doctors, a lot of doctors in the community. So there was already a, a vibrant Jewish community, just not religious or? No, I, it was a, a me medium size. Right. Long Beach is, uh, it's a, it's a large city. Right. Um, but it's it's considered to be like a suburb of Los Angeles, but it's not a suburb; it's its own city. I think it's the fifth largest city in, in California. Yeah, and it's a good hour's drive out of LA. More mm, no? half hour, thirty minutes in, in LA. Depends traffic? on the traffic. Right. Depends on the traffic. Right. On a on a Monday Shabbos and and with you know at eleven o'clock you can get that you can get in eighteen minutes, twenty minutes. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I always thought I was in LA and you show for two it years. It seems like thought, it's a lot further because right. the traffic is notorious in uh, right in California. Right. Um, so it was a community where you had one shul. Um, there was no other Orthodox shuls there. Um, there was a young Israel that tried, they failed, uh, and and pretty much you had this a small community. Let's say a hundred families. So Lubavitch so. was a one shul. The Lubavitch is the one shul mm -hmm. with uh, quite a few other people. You had, you had modern Orthodox. Right. You had a few Litvaks. A few, right. But it was mainly Balichovas. I was and, in that shul. I was in that shul once. Right. Yeah. Congregation Lubavitch on uh, Atlantic. Right. Um, Actually, my, I was there with my, with my grandfather. There was a guy. This guy there, Bumi. Bumi Stern. Yeah. Bumi Stern. All of Shalom, Yeah. He's from Philadelphia. Yeah. And so he got my grandfather once when I was with him in California to come for bring. Yeah, so that was I made it to the shul there. Yeah, yeah. Bumi was a big chassid of your your grandfather. Yeah, he, his mother literally lives yeah. down the street from my grandparents. I, when I was helping your father that year, um, I spent twelve months with your grandfather. Sorry, oh, it was twelve months. I twelve thought, months. Yeah, I thought a year. It was just a summer. Okay. No, it wasn't just a summer. It started with the summer. Okay. And then, uh, uh huh. Nice. I spent the full year with him. Um, so. Erev Yom Kippur, I brought Kaparis to uh, her house. Uh, your, your grandfather sent me with chickens to do Kaparis with uh, right. Bumi's mother. Right. She was a special woman, I remember. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then I gave Bumi a report, and he was so excited and so proud. <laughs> Bumi was a character. Oh, yeah. He was a real character. Oh, yeah. Homesick for Lubavitch is brought to you by Yuvla Media, which, yes, is my video production company. At Uvla Media, we believe in the same principles as this podcast, namely that in our communities, there are just so many stories worth sharing and worth telling, and that in the end, a good story is always so much more. Over the past few years, we have helped dozens of nonprofits, companies, and families share their very precious stories with the community. If you're looking to share your story, please don't hesitate to reach out to us for a free consultation at hello at uvlamedia.com. Again, that's hello at uvlamedia.com. A link can be found below as well. For now, let's get back to the podcast. Yeah, so you were saying that there's one shul. So there was one shul. Right. Um, the shluchim, it was my parents and a few other families, um, 
there were a few girls my age that were the children of Shluchim and a couple boys that were a little bit older than me. But in my class, I was the only one who was, you know, from from Shliach. There were some children of Balichova. Um, right. So I always felt that I was in, in two worlds. Uh, when I was in Long Beach, I was the, the Shliach's kid. I was right. the Chassidish one. Right, know? right. Um, and coming here to Crown Heights, which we would come every year, minimum of one time a year, um, Pesach. We came every year to, to be by to be with the Rebbe for Pesach. Um, but then many years, there were multiple times a year I would come. Right. And I felt uh, with my cousins and with my Crown Heights friends, I felt very much... Uh, Californian. You know, I was a Californian. I was other. I was different. Right. Um, right. And uh, that was, that, that, that's a part of my story as well. Right. You know, um, the roles get flipped as I cross uh, the country. Right. Where suddenly I'm the, the, they used to call me the wild Indian, the bum, the, uh, the, 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 the doesn't even know Yiddish. You know, that, that, that kid. But uh, All right. I, had, I had a lot of experiences here in Crown Heights. Um, as long as they didn't call you Yerushalmi. They didn't call me Yerushalmi. <laughs> they didn't know. We'll get to that too. They didn't know. But uh, they knew my Zayda. Right. My Zayda was very well known. Yeah, but I, I remember Rafa brings for us, uh, Robert Greenwald, and I don't like, or maybe we just we, were, we didn't realize, but like he wasn't, he was seen like as a chassid from Eretz Yisrael, not as a Yerushalmi. Like he'd, but he was a chassid from Eretz Yisrael. I, I understand. But yeah. So like we didn't get past that to like, oh, he's also Yerushalmi. I mean, you know, we were just like you know, younger and and more innocent and less less uh, you know, uh, less making everybody into categories. Um, yeah, I, rem- I remember if I bring in with your grandfather, Robert Greenwald. Where was this? I think it was in. Mar- I'm trying to. I think it was in Morristown. Morristown? I'm, tr- I'm trying to figure out how he ended up there. He would come often to Morristown because he had a daughter that lived there. Who was that? Leah Strux. Ah, Shia Strux ah right, 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 right. That's what it was. Yeah, she was sick. No, that, so this was before any, I, or maybe maybe she was sick and nobody else knew. But this was before, like I think he was just. I think we were there in the summer, and he was just visiting. Could that be, or he only came to visit when she was sick? No, he would come before. Um, so I don't remember what year it was. I don't remember like knowing about anything with the Struxes. Right. Um, so, yeah, actually, actually, I actually met your uncle, who was a fabulous man, Rabbi Strux. Um, but so I remember if I bring with him, we were there in the summer, and if I bring, then yeah, it was it was very cool. Yeah, it was very cool. I I I, I, I told you I don't have a photographic memory, so I don't remember dynamic, what he said. He was a dynamic but, person. But I remember I remember there being an impression there. I remember I remember to this day that we we had that Fabring. Yeah, yeah it, you know it's really interesting that you talk about you know like the you know feeling never feeling quite in place when you're in California. You're you're the Lubavitch Kronheitzer, and when you're in Kronheitz, you're the Oysvar of California. That or whatever. was very much my story. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's it's you know, obviously with Shluchim's kids, it's 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 far more pronounced, and you know, it's much more obvious. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's just I think it's just a feature of because like, you're talking here, you're talking about growing up in a Lubavitch community. Mm-hmm. A smaller community, which is also a more like complicated community, where there's a group of shluchim, a group of mekurovim, a group of balichovas, a group of non orthodox. Like it's, it's more of a hodgepodge. It's it's Arya very Sa- very much so. Right, Arya saw the community, right. and like then and when Crown Heitzers would come for simchas, right, or come to visit their relatives, there was a lot of making fun of the community. Right, right. Yeah. there was a lot of mocking. Right. Oh, you have Shalash Shudis. Right. Oh, you're singing these, uh. these weird little Kadeli <laughs> songs. What's wrong with you guys? What's yeah. there? And and I would try to defend the place. You know, what do you mean? It's, you, you don't have to defend it. You have to let them. I was a kid. See, you have to let them sing the songs a little bit and eat the Shalash Shudis. And before you know it, they're like, oh, wait a second. This is, <laughs> this yeah. is enjoyable. <laughs> right. Oh, right. I mean, yeah. But as a kid, you don't think that you don't think that far ahead. Right. Yeah. So, you know, so like one way of framing it is that like, you know, it's. This 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 story of there's an inside and an outside you know there's like inside Lubavitch is Crown Heights and the outsider and the outsider complex which is real I'm not I'm not trying to say it's not real 
you know, but I've been reading recently. You have to understand something. My, the house that I was raised though, right. my parents were both very, very, uh, and your mother's from Crown Heights. My isn't mother's she? from Crown Heights and very much proud of her Crown Heights identity. She, she, she hasn't she, lived there for 43 years and still considers herself a Crown Heights. Or she's a nemesis, right? She's a nemesis. Yeah. yeah. Yossi, Yossi, Yossi's the, older sister. The, yeah. the, the, the first, first, the, the, yeah. first uh, the first guy in the pot is your uncle. Yeah. 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 My mother, when I was a little kid, I mean, for as far back as I can remember, would try to hammer home that this is not your real home. Your real home is Crown Heights. Uh, if you would live in Crown Heights, you would be this. And if you would live in Crown Heights, you'd be that. I, I'm not saying I agree with that approach. I know it came with, from the best place in her heart. Right. Um, and she really wanted that. Right. Those were the tools that she was given. And those were the, the ways that she felt uh, her best discussions would be to the Rebbe that we're here because we're on Shluchas. But ideally, we should be in Crown Heights. Ideally, you should be like your cousins. Ideally, you should be like those right. uh, kids. And it left a, it left a strong impression. <laughs> it, was not, it was not fun or easy to hear that all the time. Look, I, I, re I respect very much the way you just framed it. Um, I think that I think I see it very much in that way as well. You know, I think you know you could look at how your parents raised you, and have questions about it. Um, but instead of turning left to resentment, and you know, like uh, why why how dare how dare they did that or why do they do it? It's more like understanding that there was they, they were in, they were in uncharted territory. It came from the deepest place of of trying to bring their children up. Right. In, in the right way of concern right yeah and and they were in uncharted territory and they were concerned they were concerned that all my classmates were uh kids that had televisions in their homes exactly. movies in their homes uh pets dogs uh, exactly I, I became an animal lover when i was a very little kid <laughs> and i still till today i love animals um and i would cry and beg for a dog right and my parents were like what <laughs> you're not getting a dog so they they compromised and got me a, a parakeet I was which gonna, died. I thought it was going to be a hamster. And then two chickens that died. I thought it was going to be a hamster. No hamster. No, nothing not kosher. So uh -huh. a whole series of goldfish. What, parakeets are kosher? No, they're not. But uh, birds are different. <laughs> birds. I birds mean, they are. They, they are. I mean, they, um, they, technically, they are. But and, and these were my friends. Um, these were the kids. The, 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 the Freeds and the Goodmans and the Cyrulniks. And, right. You know, all these and oh, Aaron Freed, the Aaron's a yeah, dear no, friend till today. I know Aaron, and and I grew up with him and his his brothers. Um, right. Their house was like a second house, and that wasn't always easy on my parents. No. Um, yeah, look, this is a story of shluchas today. This is a story of shluchas where shluchim's kids. Um, I had a little bit less of my younger siblings simply because there were less Jewish kids my age in Hong Kong, but my younger siblings had full classes of Jewish kids. And classmates, and they stayed in Hong Kong till they were older. And to this day, many of their Hong Kong classmates are their closest friends. Right. And in many cases in Hong Kong, they weren't at all religious. They were just very proudly Jewish. So right. half of my class in Hebrew Academy, those were the Long Beach kids. But Hebrew Academy attracted kids from 30 miles in every direction. Right. So Hebrew Academy was in Orange County, right. which was further south towards San Diego. In, on the border of Huntington Beach. It's still there today. Right. Huntington Beach, my parents are still uh, in the school. Um, they founded the school? Or they my were... parents, no. My parents came afterwards. So uh, Pekarsky and, and Schusterman and Newman founded the school. Interesting. The school started in Long Beach, but very quickly they bought a property, uh, an old public school. In It's on the border of Westminster and Huntington Beach. Um, it's such a fascinating parsha in general that there was a time where it seems like the focal point of Shlichus was to open up schools. That was very much their focal point. And they... they but that's, they, that changed somehow. Um, not, not, I'm not saying Long Beach in general. Like, Well, I think it depends on, on the place. Right. Uh, in downtown LA, I did absolutely, over the past uh, 17 years, I've done nothing for children. Zero. Because there are no children. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. And I had all these dreams to open up a, a, a preschool or a nursery for the working mothers and the working uh, young right. parents. But uh, it's not, the whole neighborhood isn't conducive. And that's part of the problem with uh, downtown LA. Part of the challenges there is that we don't 
keep any families there. And they move out the second they, they have kids. They move out the second they have kids. But not only because there's not an infrastructure for children. Right. It's because it's a very unsafe and uh, it's, a, it's a dangerous place right now. And it has been for years. Yeah. When we moved there, it wasn't dangerous. But it wasn't. No. I it, mean, was, it was rough. Right. You were on Shulchus and Ali. Yeah, I never made it to downtown LA. You never did Miftsayim there? No. the I, main Miftsayim route, sir. I was in Marina del Rey area. But yeah, I mean, uh, everybody knows what's going on in California. I've been in California recently, and it's, you know, it's sad to see what's gone on. What's, oh, yeah. what's happened in LA. Like, yeah, you know, I, my guess is that when you moved there, it was edgy. It was edgy. It was, it was gentrified. It was gentrifying. It was very much on the rise. This right. was 2007. Um, right. The resurgence started in 1999 slowly, and then... Right. In 2003, 2004, there was a, a big uptick of conversion right. of these old dilapidated um, buildings, office buildings, into lofts. And it became very cool and very trendy and a lot of young people moving in there. And uh, we were excited. I was very excited. Um, it was not easy from day one because there was, there was a lot of, uh, there was a huge homeless problem. Right. You know, the Californians called it an uh, uh, unsheltered population, underhoused people. No, it's a homeless problem. Um, yeah. And I'm actually, uh, it's, it's such a, uh, an issue in California, the homelessness. And it's one where people refuse to look at it. Um, they refuse to look at it with, uh, realistically. And I became an expert on homelessness, unfortunately. Right. Um, I've read so much and I've deep dived into the issue because it directly affected my life. Right. I watched um, my, 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 my neighborhood of where I lived and brought up my kids go from rough to bad to worse to just a disaster of a place um, right. in terms of safety and cleanliness and security and just uh, it became really untenable. Um, you don't have the luxury of trying to abstract it away and talk about it in fancy terms that help uh, you sleep at night. Not at all. And, right. and it's so interesting because the neighborhood attracts liberals. And it. Uh, my wife and I used to laugh how the people that would move into the area and that would show up at our Shabbos table after meeting us and me uh, coaxing and, and, and trying to bring them in. Uh, virtually almost all of them would, you know, newly found in the neighborhood and they would preach about, you know, the injustices of homelessness and, yeah. and how the income inequality in California is just so terrible and the lack of, uh, of uh, affordable housing right. and all this nonsense. And without, without exception, Give within it. a year, they were either out, they either moved out because once your car is broken into two or three times and your windows are smashed right. and you're slipping and sliding in human feces and you're uh, dodging the heroin needles on the floor and virtually uh, playing hopscotch over homeless, uh, some who are barely alive, right. um, you change your tune quickly. Either that, either they moved out or they were no longer uh, so, so empathetic uh, on, on, yeah. on the issue. The people with the empathy are all the Bernie Sanders crowd and all the far left that live in the adjacent areas right. of downtown. Until today, uh, cause so much um, chaos and problems by ideological, um, by with with ideological um, 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 zest, right. and 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 they the, and and these are the same people that are showing up now every single Shabbos. Almost every Shabbos since October seventh, in massive anti-Israel demonstrations, which uh, is just a, a joy for me to experience every Shabbos out my window from the river to the sea. <laughs> right, with the same shrill <laughs> voice, only some well, shrill twenty-year-old. Well, the, the good news is the good news is it is is that you know, it's coming from the same place of stupidity, and you know that. I mean, that's a good news. The bad news is, is that st stupidity has never stopped bad ideas from taking hold. Um, People buy into it, and when they see that it's failing, it, it's incredible to see how they're doubling down. Yeah. They're doubling down. California is doubling down on its failing policies. Yeah, I, mean, for, I want to take a wire. Just sure. No, no. Yeah. Oh. 
I think, I think, um, I don't want to, California is a sad story and I mean, it has a lot of lessons for everybody. I don't want to make this podcast about California, but I do, you know, now that you've opened up that door, um, I think, I think, you know, I, I think it's, I think it, it, it's interesting to tie it, you know, to tie it back to, you know, even what we were discussing yeah. earlier about, about, you know, the challenge of growing up in a community and, uh, you know, one kind of Lubavitch community and then never really fitting in there and never really fitting in, in the kind of main frame or main Chabad community. You know, you, you spoke about doubling down and it's just a lot of it's human nature of being unwilling um, or being uncomfortable in facing the problem and acknowledging what it is. There's this sense that you know, there's this problem out there. If I if I examine it, there's a chance, at least a fifty percent chance, I guess, people, you know, would think that I'm gonna find out its force than what I think it is now. Mm-hmm. And I and I'd rather not find out. Right. I'd rather kind of you know, I have no choice but to know it's out there, but let me keep it at arm's length. I'll rationalize it. I'll, I'll, I'll give it different kind of framing. I'll talk about, like you said, like instead of calling it a homeless problem I'll, or like a problem of people who are mentally ill or people who are dangerous, um, people who have in many cases abandoned responsibility for themselves years ago, and that was a choice, instead of, instead of f- framing it that way, which, by the way, is not, is, is not like a conservative position necessarily. There, there are many other countries who are not conservative who see it that way. So the point is that... So there's a reason for that. Right. There's, there's, a, reason, there's a reason for that narrative. For the denial. And that narrative is, rather than focus, because the fact is, is that 80% of the homeless that we see on our streets are either drug addicted, mentally ill, or both. And for the city officials of California who have shirked all responsibility or main responsibility of cleaning up and and providing for the safety of all the citizens of Los Angeles, it's not just LA, it's uh, San Francisco. Right. It's 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 mainly on the West Coast. You have it in Oregon, you have it in Seattle, but right. down but Los Angeles is, is has the largest homeless population in the country and downtown LA is the epicenter of all that. Skid Row. I mean, Skid Row. I've been to third world countries that make downtown LA look like uh, you know, that 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 you know, downtown Mexico City. Looks, this this is not a third world problem. This is a first world problem. It's a first world problem, which, again, the reason that this happens is because there's there's an ideology behind it, and that ideology is that we need to fix the housing problem. That it's 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 a housing issue first. Housing first. Is that what it is? Is it is it not that we don't want to we don't want to recognize that there are some things that don't have easy solutions. There are some things that don't have solutions that can just be bought with money. Well, the way that they... Well, the way that they housing, live. housing we can just build. We can pay for. Whereas people who have, who have li- lived messed up lives, or even people who, who, have, who, who have lived tragic lives and have, have f- fallen into these hard times because of terrible tragedies, you know, family yeah. got killed, whatever it, is, whatever it is. But life is sad and tragic and messy. You don't want to deal with that, so instead you you basically focus, you focus your eff- you focus your perspective on the things that that feel less it's uncomfortable. That, but it's worse than that. Number, yeah. it's, 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 I'm it's, just trying to. I'm just trying. I'm just trying. All, I'm just trying to tie it back to like like, like these 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 things that we've talked about in the or. All right, let's stay away from homelessness because yeah. I could talk about that for hours. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't. I don't. I, I'm, I'm sure you have you have a lot to get off your chest. I just. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, I don't want to offend the three um, homeless advocates that listen to this podcast. I'm no, just kidding. Love They're you. welcome to reach out to we, me. We, we love you. I'll no, we love you too. No, I mean, I'll set them straight. There's different opinions on. There's different opinions on this. Obviously, um, there's different opinions on this. It's not what this podcast is about. Right. But I, I, I think you know when you open up that door, I think it's and you had mentioned earlier, you know, the growing up on growing up on shluchas and you know feeling out even when you're in and kind of that constant sense of homelessness you know that's something that's been discussed on this podcast before right by my brother and i think mainly my brother 
And a lot of the reaction was, you're making it up, or you're exaggerating, or it's his personal issue. And and basically, frankly, a lot of gaslighting. And if you want to be charitable, a lot of reframing. So it's not this, it's that. It's not that, it's the other thing. Constantly reframing and repositioning to get to a place where the person, one person reached out to me and said, look, you know, your brother, you're talking about how it's hard for, you know, Shluchim's kids to adjust to the yeshiva system you know, growing up in a completely different world, which which I don't think is even arguable, but, you know, you made it like you're making as if it's like that. I refused to accept that something that the Rebbe instituted, namely shlichus, would result in these kind of problems. So if there are these problems, it cannot be a result of shlichus, it must be a result of something else. That is... The parents. Right. Which to me is just... Forget about whether or not I agree with it. I frankly, I right. clearly don't agree with that. Yeah. I, I think it's bonkers. Right? I think it's bonkers, and I think I think it's also gutless because very few of those people would ever be willing to say that to one of the parents. Exactly. But forget about that. It's people it, say that today about about it, it, it's gone far beyond shlichus. There's I know, there's, I, there's there's so many Lubavitchers today that have walked away from uh, from from kite. Right. They are no longer religious. Um, and every one of them have a story. Right. And very often the answer immediately is, you know, screwed up home. Right. Parents, uh, the, you know, the, the, the parents didn't give them a, a pure chinuch. Right. The parents compromised too much, et cetera, et cetera. Right. You know, and, and some of these parents are the most dynamic and, and chassidisha parents that gave every single one of their kids the best that they could. Right. Uh, people have stories, but it's so easy to. So the question is, why do people do that? So assuming it's a defensive mechanism. Oh, that's, right. that's what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is, is that there, it's a, it's a defensive mechanism. It's a coping mechanism. It's instead of, if somebody, somebody presents or talks about a, 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 a obvious uh, challenge or problem where it is, you have kids that grow up in a situation where they're in a community that is that is one way, and then they need to adjust to a different kind of community and 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 they're being told their whole life that really that other community is their community like you were saying your mother's telling you Kranites is your place but I come to Kranites and everyone tells me that I'm yeah. not from here and I don't belong yeah. so what am when I? When did you come to America? Yeah. That's what they used to ask me. When did you come to America? <laughs> so what am when I? When did you get to America? I, I live in California. It's America. No, it's not America. <laughs> yeah, so what am I? Who am I? Right? And then like, look, also, I don't know exactly your experience but I remember growing up in Hong Kong and this will sound arrogant, and f- fair enough, maybe it was. I wanted to have nothing to do with the Granitesers, frankly. Like, like I, I did. I, I wanted when I came. So I want to. I want to just. I I don't want to be a Granitezer. I didn't want to be a Granitezer, but I I wanted to be a part of the Rebbe scene. That was very important to me. Okay, so you're, I, you're older than me, though. So that's, that's I'm 42. Right. So, you're, so you're, you're 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 a solid six years older than me. Yeah. So that's a big difference. So I so this this is very important. I, I didn't not like Crown Heights. To me, Crown Heights and 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 that part it was a it was a enigma and an adventure that I wanted to be a part of, but I didn't always know how to how to navigate to get through. Right. Now I am very grateful that I have a second cousin, and his first cousin, who they were seven seventy um, tunnel rats, if you will. Now I know today that has it. <laughs> what I mean is that these kids were um, in seven seventy all the time, right. every time. Right. Um, they they lived in seven seventy. I mean, they were all Italianics, but I mean, I think right. when, as soon as they finished school, they ran to seven seventy. Like. Uh-huh. They were in 770 and their parents were totally okay with it. And they knew every in and out and exactly <laughs> how to navigate. And they were rough, tough, how old, kids. How old are we talking here? So I was, these these are two or three years older than me. Um, this was when I was seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, okay. So, so not Bar Mitzvah. Before Bar Mitzvah. I was 10 years old by Jose and other. Um, anyway, these two, my cousin, my second cousin and his second cousin, and his first cousin, sorry, they took me everywhere with them. So because of them, now my father also would take me. My father was very big on never missing a fabring and that he was there, never missing anything. If I could, it, you know, he came here to be by their Rebbe, so he would not, right. he, and he would try to bring me as well. But he, there's actually a story when I was two and a half, 
But there's um, a lot there's a lot more to being part of Karnites than just coming to Fabring and is what you're no, saying. No, no, no. These two these my cousin, right. because of him and, and, and his first cousin, I got front row access. Right. I was under the Rebbe's uh uh, uh table and, and, and playing with the Rebbe's shoelaces. I at seven years old. You're one of those. I, I wasn't one of those. But for me, because it was so... I, I was in Crown Heights two or three weeks out of a year, right? So these memories are etched into it. A couple of years ago... So I, it described to me a little bit the shoelaces thing. I've heard of it before. What, what exactly was that like? You're, I mean, I'm, do you remember, do you remember what the feeling was? Like, well, what's... What, the like, feeling was I'm trying to look up and see the Rebbe's um, face. Why is a seven-year-old interested in that? Because that's what my cousin and his cousin was doing they're trying to see and they, the, because all oh, access to be as close as possible right why 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 at that age do you care i think that because you're, you're pushing to be a part of kedusha you're, you're at pushing. that age you're thinking in those terms again i think that you also see the bahram pushing you see uh -huh. everybody else pushing right and right. I, I don't know i know i went along with it and it was thrilling not just thrilling i felt i still can remember till today the the, my heart beating when the Rebbe would look in my direction or like, and, and, and it wasn't... Did Rebbe ever like acknowledge that you were playing with the shoelaces? I don't remember if we... No, no, no. Um, I think that happened once or twice. Uh -huh. Meaning, what, what, by the, like I got a place by the after when the Rebbe was saying, you know, on a, on a regular Shabbos or maybe it was, it was Yom Tif. Um, there were other times that I... I had a place like right by the um, Fabreg and Bima mm -hmm. where Rabbi Yoel used to sit, but with my back, meaning on that little ledge with the Rebbe, like sitting right in front of the Rebbe. Now I was probably eight years old, right? So you're sitting under the table? Uh, not under the table. No, no, no. In front not of under, the table. In front of the table. Ah. And every, not during the Sichas, but every um, like three minutes during the Nagunim, I would dare to like lift my head up and, and, and look, and, and, and the Rebbe's right there, like, as far as I'm from you. And I just remember that, that, that electric shock. And it was so... Why was it, I'm trying to understand. Why, like, is, it, is it from... I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not disputing that you felt that way. I believe you when you say you felt that way. Was it because your parents instilled it in you? Of course. In my house, everything was Rebbe, 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 Rebbe. No, because, so, because for example, like, you know, I just spoke um, recently to a photographer who was, wasn't religious when he came to photograph the Rebbe. And he's talking about how he's getting up close with his camera and like, right. and like breaking protocol. Like, you know, it, 770 is so informal in so many ways that like, that it's not like you're walking into the Royal court of England where everybody is all, you know, constipated essentially. No, and like, me. you know, like very, very serious and, and, and everybody's in their place. And then, there's a whole protocol built to make this weasel of a king right. be right. impressive, right? And you can't help but be impressed. You're in a palace, right? 770 is not a palace, let's be honest. It's, it's a basement. To me, no, but to me as a little kid, first of all, it felt enormous. It uh -huh. felt like the size of a football stadium. Really? And I remember once my father was a, a, a big Baltfila. Right. Um, I remember once I didn't know that he would be Chazen. By the Rebbe. Right. And this is Pesach. And I'm in the back by the bleachers playing. And I hear, I'm like, it sounds like my father. It sounds like my father. I probably was, again, eight or nine. And pushing myself to the front of the shul. Right. And sure enough, my father's the chazan. And I'm standing next to my father. And the Rebbe's davening right here. It was such a proud moment. Wow. And it was so, I, I, these are the moments that are etched in my, in my, in my consciousness. Hmm. in my brain and I, I i i still have such a like my my heart skips a beat when i think back to the shvil the the right. sea of people opening up right and they're ever walking through right like with that energy and the the hand again you're asking where it comes from it was an experience that i'm glad that i had because i didn't need other people to tell me about it there's a whole other complicated relationship now that I have with the Rebbe that's filtered through teachers and mashpim and what they told me the Rebbe is and the Rebbe wants and the Rebbe... But I'm, ha I'm glad I had the, the, those opportunities. By the way, I, I thanked my cousin a couple of years ago. He didn't know what I was talking about. He had no idea. He's like, what? I did that? 
Right. I'm like, you don't remember? Because of you, I had all these front access. To him, he did this every, 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 every day, every week. That's part of so life. So he didn't remember when his cousin came a couple times a year and he took him along right. for the ride. And to me, those are all my memories of their, all, right. all, all my memories. Um, I still think, though, that my age had a very difficult time. And I'll tell you why. Anybody my age within three or four years, I would say five years older, five years younger, because we had the childhood experience. But then, you know, again, Chavzai and other happened when I was 10. Right. And everything changed. Everything changed. Right. Um, I, 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 I look... One of the themes I noticed that you do on your podcast is you talk about time. Right. And how time is the one thing that marches on. Right. With or without us. And to deny time and to reject time isn't of itself a travesty. Right. It's it's I, I think you use the word it creates cynicism. Um I, I am fully on board with that these days. But what's uh, what I have to contend with is that for many, many years in my Bucher years, right? When I was a Bucher, um, first of all, I remember I, I wanted so much to be in front of the Rebbe with a hat. I wanted to be with a hat. Right. First of all, I was a tall, like, you want to be, you tall, want to be one of the Bucher. I wanted to be one of the Bucher. I wanted right. to be part of that. Right. And part of the, the, right. The, I didn't even know the terms out of room. I didn't speak Yiddish. Right. My father spoke to me only in Yiddish before, until I was about two and a half. And then I went to preschool or nursery and all the Yiddish went out the window. Nobody was referring to it in terms those days. Terms is for later on for, 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 for the peanut gallery like me to, to, to define it. Right. At the time, you're in it. If you're in it, you don't define it. You don't call it. I was in it for just a couple weeks out of the year. Right. Um, and then I would go back to California. Right. And it was like a totally different world. But I was so proud. I would come back with my kosher bracha. And the teacher, I would make sure that the teacher would make a Shabbos party before, um, b b on Friday. And I would give every kid from my kosher bracha. Right. And I felt like, oh, I'm sharing it with the, with the class. Um, it sounds matzah also that I got from there. I'm like, this, this was like. It, it sounds like in those moments. It sounds, I mean, you said a lot there, obviously. Hopefully we'll get to more, more of it. But it sounds like. If we're just going to talk before we get to dealing with it later, it sounds like in that moment you things made sense, like what your mother told you about who you were, and you and your little group, your little kind of group of yeah, the click, crown heights click of friends, but not the general crown heights that were mocking you, but your cousin and your and his cousin. He mocked were, me too, right? But they they brought yeah. you into their they brought you into yeah. their adventure, yeah, right? Like it kind of like you, me and my guys and my couple guys and and uh, you know and 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 what my mother told me, it all kind of gels together and makes sense, right? Right, and but there were still things that I didn't. I remember as a little kid, like, oh, you learned English? I was like, I was proud of my learning English. I, I read a lot of books. I was, I, I knew geography, I knew history, and and these kids knew nothing. And I was, and they wore it as a badge of honor, and they were trying to shame me for like, why do you know such stupid? But that doesn't why do you know such stupidity. That doesn't to <laughs> me. That doesn't go get. That doesn't confuse the story because to me, what I'm what I'm seeing is one one of the things is Kranites, and the other thing is is the Rebbe. Yeah, right, Kranites. You know, yeah, there you're going to run up against, um, you know, the different cultures and so on. But what your mother was telling you was was not so much about that you're really from President Street. Was that more like you're from this chutzer of the Rebbe, like the Rebbe's world. That's your world, right? The yeah. world around the Rebbe is your world. She framed it different. If you would learn in Holy Torah, though, if you would uh, be in Holy okay, Torah. Okay, so she learned in she was, she was a bit, like I said, her brothers learned in Holy Torah. Uh -huh. Holy Torah was what she grew up with. Okay, fair enough. And I don't think she meant it that way, though. I think I may have heard it that way, but I think what you're saying is is right in terms of like the most important thing is to be to be a part of of the Rebbe, like to be to be connected to the Rebbe in in that way. What I'm getting at, what I'm getting at is that like 
because we 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 we're, we're hitting on a bunch of themes here. You know, there there's there there's the the challenge and the problem of 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 growing up outside the nucleus community or the nucleus identity of Lubavitch, right? There is the the unwillingness to confront what that mean what that meant then, what that means today. It changed also. The, the, I'll tell you the, something. This the, comfort, right? Well, it also I want to just yeah. remember one thing. Maybe you remember this. Maybe you don't. The whole idea of being a shliach, a son of a shliach or a shliach's kid and a badge of honor, that didn't exist then. That did not exist then. That happened after Gimel Tavis. By the time I grew up, it Before, existed. Yeah, yeah, so you had the Tziri right. and we care for you and you're right. part of it. There was none of that. Right. We went to camp, you Floridians, Californians, you're all a bunch of bums. <laughs> you, you know, you, 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 we, were, we were harassed and mocked and we made our own little like army to fight back i want to get i want to get back to that i want to i want to include that though in this point i i i don't i don't see that i'm not sure that that changed so much for the kids from long beach even later because what what i'm seeing uh, let me get to it in a minute i i think so you have these you have these 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 themes you have the the inside outside dynamic right there's an insider there's Lubavitch of Karnites, and there's growing up outside of that and trying to fit in there, and on top of that, the whole shlich is like, I, I, we're there because we're not there because my father has a good job there. We're there because my father was sent there. Right. But yet him being sent there has made me different than the yeah. place. So it's complicated. And I didn't want to feel like I'm defective. Right. I didn't want to feel like I'm it's defective. Under, it's understandable. I wanted to feel like I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a good boy. It's understandable. I, I, there's nothing wrong with me, but it, somehow there were messages sent. Of course. Um but it wasn't just you know from what I heard at home, again. And, no, and it's I, all it's from all over the place. So you you have you have you have you have this theme. You have the unwillingness to confront it, and then what I what I hear again and again, not just from you but in general, is when I was around the Rebbe, it all kind of it all kind of got solved. And I yes, don't. I yes. Don't, yeah, yeah. And I don't mean that at all in a cynical way. I'm not suggesting that you or others are just kind of you know sugarcoating it. You know, the, you know, once it comes to the Rebbe, it was fine. Because if, I, you'll see where I'm going with this. If, if you, if, if you take a cynical take and say, okay, just, you know, you're just, you're just, you know, you don't want to, you, you don't want to challenge anything about the Rebbe. So once you talk about the Rebbe, everything's, everything's nice and dandy. So then you could say, that's why people are not confronting it. Because, you know, they, they, they the problem would lead to why, what was the Rebbe thinking about? If the about? buck stops by the Rebbe, so then the Rebbe is responsible for everything that happened. Right, right, and and and, and people. There is like, some truth to that. There's truth, I and mean, let's get to that later. But I think I think before you get to that, I think you, before you get to that, I think I think it's worth to like, to me, it's something that really really um, fascinates me is that you you have the the kind of inside outside the the this 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 need for this homogeneous what would be the homogeneity I don't even know how to pronounce it but where everybody's the same Everybody, monolithic right uh, monolithic homogeneous we're homogeneous everybody homogenous. looks the same does the same thinks the same acts the same but that's already that's already that's already like oversimplifying that there's a certain kind of like Consistency, people, you know, the consistency. What is this identity? What does it mean to be a Lubavitcher? There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a understandable need or desire for consistency. That the same way, you know, like what's so beautiful, let's say, about a Starbucks. I mean, I don't happen to like Starbucks. I don't like Starbucks. Okay, so what's what's beautiful about an you Apple walk store? In and you have the same smell, the same taste, the the same, wherever you are, wherever you are, whether you're, you're in, in Budapest right. or Hong Kong or right, right. Or, or in Los Angeles. You know what you're going to get in Starbucks, right? Right. right? Whereas, whereas with whereas with let's say you know the a a more like independent coffee shop, which is you know it's a hit or miss. It could right. be delicious. It could be amazing. It could yeah. also be a disaster, right? Right. And so people understandably look for consistency. Like, what is this identity? Let's find the consistent identity, right? And the problem is. That especially with shlichus, but I would contend way before shlichus, there was always this fracture of there's Lubavitch here, there's Lubavitch there, there's all kinds of Lubavitch. Right. Like if anything, I would think that before, like back in Russia, it was more fractured than it is today. Like I mean, even, even I would, even, I would imagine so. I mean, if you had people that came from Kremenchuk, 
right. the people that came from Neville and people that came from uh, Klimovich right. or Kaslavich, every one of them had a different, uh, a, a different. Um, exactly. Uh, they they had a different taste in the way that they learned so this in the way that they related to their Rebbe. It's um, more than that. Lubavitch was a village. Yes. There was no Crown Heights. There was right. no there was no center. Of gra- like yeah, there were a few people that lived in Lubavitch. They were looked down at. By were they? Lubav- yes. Yeah. There was a famous saying, and Tehachtim changed the game a little bit. Right. Tehachtim became the place to be as a bacher, but there was a famous saying that uh, uh, you know around the ocean the sand is the driest, which was a reference to the Lubavitchers who lived in Lubavitch that they're like the driest chassidim because they're they're like they're 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 too close to the kedusha or too right. close to the intensity to actually to actually absorb it and become you know become. Be, be, to, 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 to be to be inspired kind by like it. if you're a masker then you can't be a real chassid that, yeah pro- probably which I don't buy it, any uh, yeah. of those statements okay I'm just telling you how your people your schleimer from... also can't be real chassid yeah, well, that's a, yeah. <laughs> that it's close to home <laughs> yeah yeah so I'm just saying like I, I, I'm, people those days it seems like there was in many ways a kind of Lubavitchers, it's not to live in Lubavitch is not that is not the ideal it's not the dream like it's it's not something to look up at right and what was even more fascinating for me was recently I was reading this, the journal of the Friedrich Rebbe that's printed in the Akdam of Kuntras of Mayan. And it's a, it's a few it's the years of Samach Aleph to Samach Yon. So 1901 to 1903, the Friedrich Rebbe is, um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of pressure on, on Lubavitch from the Haskala movement and then from the Zionists. Mm-hmm. And the, they're mastering on them. And there's also a lot of a lot internal of, pressure because we were losing, they were losing a lot of kids. Right. To these yeah. movements. What I didn't know was that the Skull Movement literally opened up a school in Lubavitch, like yeah. as, as like a as like a act of war. That was before the riot or after the riot? Kishinev riot? No. No, no, no. no. After there was a riot in Lubavitch, there was a uh, whole fist fight. Oh, that, that I, took place. That, that I don't know. That I know all about, about the fights. <laughs> 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 that doesn't matter. Yeah. That doesn't matter about. But I mean, there, there was. You know, it's a very fascinating thing. But there was also at the time. There was a lot of issues that the Rebbe, the Rebbe Shab, and the Fidik Rebbe were dealing with, um, with Jews who lived in the pale of the settlement. Most yeah. of the Jews were not allowed to live in the cities, and they were struggling to put bread on the table, yeah. and they were cutting corn, they were trying to get into the cities, getting into trouble. They were in general being persecuted. And what was fascinating, and this is where it comes relevant. It's fascinating is you see the the Fidik Rebbe especially because he's writing the journal. He's shuttling between. Lubavitch, this kind of backwater town. I'm talking mm-hmm. economically speaking, not right. spiritually speaking. You know, this this pale settlement, shtetl, shuttling between there and Petersburg and Moscow, but not only between huts and buildings, between different kinds of chassidim. Right. There are chassidim who are these kind of, you know, chassidim that never made it out, very right. kind of Klein Kepeldicke provincial right. chassidim, and then he the, goes the, to the the the, the 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 farmers, the farmers, right, the, the little the farmers, peasants, literal farmers. Versus the cosmopolitan, yeah. um, urbane, and, and sophisticated. Shlo- and there are, uh, there, there, are, there are descriptions here of the Rebbe Shab sitting in a parlor meeting yeah. with, with, with Jews in these cities, including fellow Lubavitch Chassidim. What exactly they look like, I don't know. But Well, do you think they were dressed in shmatas? No, no, do but think I, they, don't know if they had beards, they, I don't know if they had beards or not, is what I'm saying. I don't, oh, you don't think so? No, I, I know some Maybe of them not. did. No, no, I know some of them did, some of them didn't. Yeah. I, I don't know exactly who was who, is my point. Right. I'm not that familiar. But the Rebbe Shab is berating them to not forget your brethren. Uh. Why am I bringing that up? Because the split in identity was very pronounced back then, right? Dude, like, the Rebbeim lived in Lubavitch, but... Yeah, the Rebbeim were, they were not limited to Lubavitch. The Chassidim in Petersburg and Moscow respected them too. Right. The Chassidim in Lubavitch respected them too. The, the Chassidim in Chaslavich and, and, and Nikolaev or wherever respected them too. So the identity of Lubavitch or Chassidim was fractured tremendously. What, what was the glue that held them together? It was Chassidus and in many ways the Rebbe. Yeah. Right? We and, are all Chassidim of one Rebbe. Right. Right, and so it's very that that comes back to this point that you're bringing up with the story of, of like you know, you and your friend you, you you don't know where you belong. Am I a, am I a Orange County kid? Am yeah. I a Crown Heights kid? You right. know, I'm in Crown Heights. Uh, you know, I get along with them in 770 when we're scrapping to sit by the Fabring, and but then right after we're arguing about you know Alter is better and your school sucks and yeah, so yeah, on yeah, and so yeah. forth, right? And it always comes back to yeah, but by the Rebbe it was all. 
it all made sense. And I, I gave that, I gave that, uh, I, I, said, I brought up the, the story for the Fidika and the Rashab. To, it's not, I don't think it's necessarily a cynical take. I think there's a very, it makes sense, right? Like there is this kind of, at the core of being a Lubavitcher, there is this identification with the Rebbe or how you described it earlier. Like I saw the Rebbe without anybody telling me how it was or filtering it for me. That was my moment that, that, that was mine, right? Yeah. On the other hand, it, it was very much a childhood experience. I don't remember right. one one drop of of Torah that I learned from the Rebbe. I don't. I, I didn't understand much. I, I just remember the Rebbe would say a lot of times, "Allah has come of a comma. Allah has come of a comma. Allah has come." That right. I remembered. Right. I rem I love the Nagudim because the Nagudim I knew. My father would sing Nagudim every Friday night. My right. father's a big, big Balmanagan. Right. Loves Nagudim, um, and. So the Naguna, many of them I knew, and that was exciting to be part of the singing, part of the, the which I could participate in and look at the Rebbe, and the Rebbe is giving L'chaim to everybody and trying to get the Rebbe's right. attention to give L'chaim. And, and, then, and then when things got, I mean, the, the, the energy was, was breathtaking. Right. Um, you I, and I, I also remember hearing, I, I was able to know, oh, it sounds like the Rebbe is winding down because it was hard as a kid to sit sure. through, through a 45-hour sicha, which you don't understand anything. And it's pushing, and it's sweaty, and it's right. you know depends on where I was standing with my right. father. Because right. there were times I stood with my father also. But I remember when I would start to hear, Oh, Gula, Sidava, you know, Amitas Vashlema, and oh, okay, there's going to be, there's gonna be uh, singing. So I love it. I love the singing. I love er that. Everybody sitting in the back of a shul of a Chabad house during a speech knows the feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was kidding. long, and for I'm a kidding. kid, it was really, really yeah. long. I'm sure. Um, and my father, uh, there, there was, I mean, I didn't ask, but there was never, I never, I wasn't from those that like left the Fabregan after the first season. It was like, I'm staying for the whole thing. Right. Well, <laughs> well you were there, there a few times a year. Yeah. But my point, my point is that I think, I think the Rebbe, I think the Rebbe, you know, the Rebbe's presence and the identification with the Rebbe allowed for a lot of these fractures to be not swept under the table, just to become less of a problem, right? Because at the end of the day, you were able to hold on for, in your mind. Yeah, okay, I, I don't fit in here, I don't fit in there, but at the end of the day, I I, I know what it means to be a Lubavitcher because, you know, I was by the Rebbe. Like this, this is what this is what it is. Yeah. Right. The problem that happens, and this goes back, in my view, why 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 people get so defensive about it, is that. You know, after Gimel Tammuz, which part are they getting defensive about? How there are people today that don't uh, look and think and walk like them? Like I, what, what? I just want to. The I problem want, of the pro the problem when anybody points out a, a a a phenomenon of fractured Lubavitch identity, I mean, when people point out how the identity is fractured and how you can't just assume that it's that it's that it's what what it is for them is for everybody else. People get defensive. Yeah, uh, is that also code word for i.e. we have real problems? I think we can get there. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not trying to sugarcoat that. I think. I think. Well, I think. Uh, I think you want. I've to noticed that any time I try to bring up a group problem that we have right. to friends, right, to mashpiim, to other people, I am immediately hit with a, 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 a defensiveness and a denial and a. So the question is why. The question is why, and I think the reason why is because when 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 the Rebbe was here, it kind of like you know we're all kind of we we the, the buck stops here like we all, we kind of the, the Rebbe is a tzaddik the Rebbe is real the Rebbe is right. true, so everybody kind of just ends up there right yeah. and like all the all the other stuff kind of is Listen, is, is, I heard from, I heard something is relevant from, but but now I, you don't have that luxury is my point. I heard something from a. From a chassid who I, I respect a lot, he said the only place of truth that he experienced was kodesh akdoshim in the rebbe's room. Okay, right. Immediately outside the rebbe's room in ganed natachtan, <laughs> there was no longer that truth, and those people right. that were the closest to the rebbe, those people that were uh, secretaries, those people. Um, in, Remarkable people, every one of them. Right. But they 
had their own agendas and their own biases and their own maybe even in in, in but that's small some, but, in small little ways. No, my, my point is though, is that when that when that's constantly overlooked, right? right. And right. It's everything's overpowered. done in the name of the Rebbe, right? right? Right. So this one speaks up in the name of the Rebbe. Right. And therefore I cannot question or challenge him because it's all in the name of the Rebbe. Right. But but one second. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe he's wrong. <laughs> Maybe it's his touch of what the Rebbe said. There you go. And it's only several years ago. Actually, it's more of seven, eight years ago. It was on a Gimel Thomas that I was feeling very, very um, low and dejected. And not wanting to participate in the group Gimel Thomas experience. I didn't want to. I there was some, I was going through some experience, a visceral experience where I didn't want to be around the crowds. I didn't want, and I was just really struggling with it. And I spoke to somebody who I respect a lot, and we, we got into discussions. What is, Maishi, what's your connection with the Rebbe? What is your, what is your discussions? Back and forth, and, and I realized, like through the discussion, I only had a handful of experiences where I, I saw, I, I, I got a dollar, a bracha batzlacha. Right. This is for your birthday. Probably all my life experiences are less than a minute of, of words. And everything else is what was taught to me and filtered through the experiences, the lenses, and the, the opinions of, of teachers, of mashpiyim. And, and to me, it was it was a light bulb. One of I, I said, I, I need to I need to learn on my own. I need to, right. And 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 started a series of me doing my own learning. Right. Uh, my thing is Teres Menachem. I love Teres Menachem hmm. more than Lukot Tzichus, more than my mark. I just I, I like that flow. Right. Um, I, I, it, it works right. for me. It's what it's what I feel. Um, right. Uh, I, I, I I take it in in uh, in the measures of. You know, sometimes I'll learn for five minutes a day, sometimes an hour a day, but I always try to, I try to make it a daily, mm. uh, a daily thing to learn Taras Menachem every day. Right. Um, to me, it seems unfiltered. It's, it's, it's what, it's what the Rebbe said at the Fabrin. Right. Right. It's not what somebody's telling me that the Rebbe said with his own uh, tenuous and his own voice and his own, uh, right. you know, sense of, of, of what the Rebbe meant, et cetera, et cetera. Right now, people counter that and they say, "Yeah, but uh, you need a mashpia. You need which the Rebbe clearly said we need a mashpia." Right. But if a Rebbe is a Rebbe, then I have to have a a, a personal connection with him. And I know you talked about this and touched about this in other podcasts. You're so welcome to talk about it. Which is which is which is. I mean, a mashpia. A mashpia is not a mashpia is not in place of having your own connection. A mashpia is is essentially a check and balance on making sure that you're not you're not getting ahead of your own skis and not, you know, convincing yourself that. But a mashpia, like you know, I know I know we both like to talk sometimes about you know, let's say lifting weights, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have someone who who shows you how to do it or shows you how not to do it. Like, you know, like, don't do it this way, it's going to hurt you. Or yeah. this is the right way to go about it and so on. But at the end of the day, you have to be motivated to do it. Of course. Right? You have to have a reason to do it. And that is something that is overlooked. You know, what, what is overlooked, I think, is that, like, you know, when you... Where does it start from? If it starts from the masses that I want to be part of this group, I, didn't, I want to be part of this group because everybody has, every human being has an instinct that they want to be part of a group, especially the one that they grew up with. There's a very powerful need to be to belong, right? If that's why, so it's nothing to do with you, what ends up happening is that you as a person starts getting more and more distant from this behavior or this whatever you're doing that's trying to fit in with the group, right? Because right? it's not you. It's not, it's not coming from you. You're not aligned with what you're doing. You're not aligned with the group. Right. And so you end up having this kind of a lot of cynicism, a lot of bitterness. This is, you know, trapped here, a sense of feeling trapped. Yeah. Right. Th there has to be a so like so does it mean you have to fry out? No, that's not what it means. It means that as, as you get older, as you get older and as life presents to you, uh, it's like the same way your, your, your skin sheds old cells and, you know, you lose hair and you grow new hair. 
the things that worked for you up to a certain point stop working for you. And at that point, you have to say, look, it's now my need to re not just only reconnect, but to connect in many ways for the first time in a way that's mine. Right. The the you know, in many ways, being forced to leave Yeshiva and being forced to leave the group think is an is is an is an, an immense blessing, right? Because you know, I, I, yeah, it forces you to. Who are you, man? I like, also think it's a personality thing. I think that there are many people that thrive in the group. They they don't like to to be an independent thinker. They don't feel comfortable charting their own path. They don't, don't feel comfortable, and then what? You don't think that there are people that that uh, there's, there are, there's there's always there's always people. But I, I look put it this way: there are far more people that could be independent and would thrive. What's independent mean? Independent does not mean uh, necessarily wearing a different color shirt, in this silly example, that's, or, yeah, that's, that's... Or, 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 or or doing something different. Independent means that, I like the word individual more, mm -hmm. right? Because independent, you know, because independent of what? Like, you, like, you, like, it's almost like a kind of step away where individual means like, I, what I, my connection or my relationship here is something that I can explain to you in my own words. And I can explain it to you in words that um, that make sense to me and will make sense to you. And, and if I want to take a step further, I can explain it to you in words that are as reasonable and in the same language as the way I explain to you what I eat for breakfast, why I eat breakfast, why, why, why I, how I run my business. Right. Down to earth, straightforward. Right normal language okay yeah. we live in we live in america okay yeah. we live in a very practical relatively practical kind of country we talk about a lot of things very practically why should this be any different and and if you can speak about it in a practical way in words that that resonate to you then that's coming from you right and 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 i feel i feel that so many you said is a problem you know people do people not want to talk about certain problems because because they're scared to talk about a group problem. I think people feel that they don't have license to examine things for themselves. I think we got used to, for one reason or another, basically pushing all the problems up the chain. Yeah. Even, even that anecdote that you told me, to me, it, I don't, it, it doesn't sit well with me. Not that which, I disagree with it. Anecdote? The one where, you know, the truth is only in the Kaysh Akdashim. And after that, it's basically, it, it, it's, it's, it's corruption all the way down. Not corruption. It starts, it starts with Bidakos but it's, not, it's not as pure. Right. I don't like that. Not, that. not that it's incorrect. Because what that does f for me, okay, look, I guess you could say it's simply an observation that there's, that there's levels and then there's, there's, there's a place of holiness and there's a place of, you know, of... of to me, that's that's language that I've heard so much that I kind of just identify it with a way of thinking. It's interesting because I never heard that language. To me, anything that anybody said in the name of the Rebbe, right, and maybe he didn't say in the name of the Rebbe, said in the name of Rabbi Chadukov. Oh, so Rabbi Chadukov told me so, so, A, B, and C. So therefore, so now, so now someone, I, I need to base my entire life on what Rabbi Chadukov told you at a Yechidus in 1974 after you walked out of Yechidus? Hold on. Okay. Maybe that applies to you. And it doesn't apply to me. And it doesn't apply to the way that I have to run no, but my comes, Chabad house. It comes from the same place. Let me explain to you. It comes from the same place. You're saying it's two different languages. It's the same language. It starts It starts with what, what you said about, you know, that, that the Kodesh Kedoshim is holy. And then after that, there's this kind of, I mean, I guess it depends how it's said. But I, I, I'm pretty sure I know how it's taken in general. It's basically, the Rebbe is pure. And after that, it's all kind of, it's all kind of, it's all it's all impure. Like somebody put it to me in different words the other day, where like the Rebbe's up here and then everyone else is down here. There's no levels. There's no hierarchy. There's no there's no we're all just a bunch of like the Rebbe, the Rebbe's up here and we're all down here. That sounds to me a lot like communism. Or forget it, I mean I don't need really to give it a label to to, to disparage it. No, the communism would say that the Rebbe's with us on the same no, but okay, we, but Stal yeah. Stalinism, <laughs> Stalinism, yeah. you know, Leninism. Yeah. Where and and but my, to me, the main point is not whether or not the Rebbe is, is higher than all of us. Accepted, okay. The point is that everyone else is equal. That's where the cynicism starts. Whereas, because very quickly, what ends up happening is like the famous Orwell line: 
all the pigs were equal, but yes, some of the pigs were equal. Yes, except those that walk on, on. No, no, all pigs are equal, but some are more equal than others. No, all animals are equal but, in but, the animal form. Yes, but all no, animals. Pigs were all. No, no, but he says all animals are equal, but some animals are, are more, more equal, equal than, than others. others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's what happens. By the way, it's a Gavala Gabor. Yes, we start corrupting that language. We start corrupting the language of of. What do you mean that everyone's equal? What does that mean? What does that mean that everyone's equal? So, so a person, a person who takes, let's say, in yeshiva, takes learning seriously, yeah. takes davening seriously, and and, and tries to daven like v'egid or the way he understands he's supposed to daven in yeshiva and learns this and so on. Yeah. He's the same as a guy who doesn't. No, no, no. Uh, so, so, so. But that's where it goes. That's oh. where that's where it goes. And and so very, I was coming from a whole different line, and I think you and I are maybe we're we're, cro- fine. we're, we're I, I our, 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 we're crossing wires. Now, you're speaking about one thing. I'm speaking about another thing. Right. Here's what I was trying to bring out. Today, we live in a world where people will take a picture of their Rebbe and put it on every uh, ideal idea and, and far-flung uh, uh, wish that they want and shove it in your face and say, this is what you need to do. You need to do this because look, the Rebbe's picture is on this and I can take a quote and everything like this. And suddenly, they're Where did challenging that come from? you. They're challenging you to go along with their I understand. perception. And I reject that categorically. Where did that come from, though, is my question. I understand what you're saying. I agree with what you're saying. I also don't like it. But where does it come from? Like, How did that gain hold? Unless you assume that everyone is either because evil we, or idiots, which I don't accept. I think, I think most people are reasonable. Mainly because as you get to know them on their, in their day-to-day lives... Most of them, not everybody. Yeah, there's some crazy people out there, but most people in their day-to-day lives live pretty reasonable lives. Mm-hmm. They don't live in abstractions. They don't live with stupid cliches, and you know they, they don't just start shouting at, at their accountant that some that there's a mar malkim in a sicha, and therefore they, they, people don't live that way. So, so why is it that when it comes to certain topics of our lives, we suddenly act this way? That that's always been my question. Like assuming that most people are reasonable and want the best for themselves and for their family and for their kids. Why do people act this way? Right? I, I agree with you, people do act this way. And I agree that there is this tendency of, you know, getting very heated very quickly and like bringing the Rebbe, like bring the Rebbe into conversation extremely quickly. It's my way of getting what I want and getting you to shut up and to fall in line. Because I am now invoking the name of the Rebbe. But how did that take hold? I, I think it's I think it's the Russians. <laughs> the Russians did it. Okay, so you're a Shalmi. There no, you go. <laughs> my mother comes directly, Bubby Nemes. I'm kidding. Uh, my, my, my mother's side is Russian, Russian. I'm kidding. I'm, okay? my, I'm my, kidding. My, I'm kidding. I, it's fine. I, 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 I'll go through it. There is, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not into the stuff but, at all. But. No, but you don't think that there was Russian influence that came in? The but, secrecy. No, but that's the, precisely. The, the, the that's, and then also. That's why I said Stalinism. Sir, that's why I said Stalinism. Fall into line. No, but, 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 Do not, but, but let's break it down a little bit. Let's yeah. break it down. It's not. Yes, some of it is just kind of, you know, this these kind of uh, controlling, you know, controlling paranoia, all this stuff. I think I think I think there's more meat on the bone, which is because I think what happens there is basically what ends up. I mean. What, if it was if, if it was the only explanation and the what the, all I could see in it is like okay that's what it is you have to deal with it but part of the problem with using that as explanation is that there's nothing to do about it like we can't we can't unrussian the whole culture or, or we could just wait it out and and wait to see what happens when we become more Americanized well, first of all we're, we're already it's, it's not one Lubavitch anymore I know but it's not one Lubavitch anymore we want to pretend. And we would like to say that there's one mishpachas chabad. Right. It's not. It's. It, it, it hasn't been this way for a quarter of a century. Yeah, but the dominant culture is still very much the same. You know, it, 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 you're, you're just saying that that's the culture. If the, you can't have it both ways, if the culture that's dominant and is very and is always asserts itself with that kind of claim to power is a Russian phenomenon, which I agree that. It no, has but you that, asked what the source of it. And that source... It's not just Russian. It's deeper than that. It metamorphosizes itself that you have certain American... It's deeper than that, I think. It's deeper. I think... I think It's not just that it's Russian. It's not just that we're Russians. Yes, there are, there are, flavor, there are Russian flavors all over the place. I agree. Uh, and, and a lot of them are very damaging. Look, there's... Look, like, I think, you know, for some reason... How did the hierarchy of Shlichus work 50 years ago? 
How did the hierarchy think, of getting their Rebbe's, their Rebbe wanted plenty, there, something to happen? How did that work? There's plenty of stuff going on back then, too. Of That's, course. I'm not saying it was perfect. There's plenty of shenanigans, too. I'm not. There's pl there plenty, plenty of people saying that my guy and uh, my masker says this and the other masker says that. There were plenty of machlekes that were happening back then, too, and everybody claiming that their Rebbe was on their side. Um, you know, there, 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 was, there, there, was, there, was, there was plenty of that. There's, there, there was, but you know, I, I feel like when you when you when you when you just when you just make it about 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 the Russian culture, it it's it's almost it's almost like it's it's almost like giving up. I think there's something more here. I think I think there is a there is a uh, there is a unwillingness to reckon with the fact that. Like you said, identity was always fractured. Identity was always fragmented. It's, it's historically like that. It was like that in Russia. It was like that after Russia. People are different. People have different backgrounds. Shlichus put it in a different direction, but there was always going to be fragmentation, and there continues to be fragmentation. Right. right? And you can no longer just shift everything up the chain to the Rebbe. You have to take responsibility. You have to take ownership. And taking ownership means taking risk of being wrong of making a mistake yeah and nobody wants to do that so instead i love that the, I, I, I i i wholeheartedly agree with you great so that, no, I <laughs> we really, saw, I, I, saw one thing today no i i <laughs> i think that you're you're just starting to scratch the pain fancy though i mean this is an indian that we can go really deep into about about willing to will, willing to go into uncharted territories and willing to to take responsibility in a real way, um, I mean, it's very hard for many, many people to, um, and this this goes directly into line with a concept that you keep bringing up in your podcast with others um, regarding time. If we are stuck in 1992 or 1994, it's now 30 years later. There are a whole host of issues, right. and uh, and, and concerns and challenges that did not exist right. 30 years ago. I think that the barometer uh, of, of what makes a chassid is to always try to look at things through the lenses of how the Rebbe approached similar things to try to come up with, um, with similar solutions or at least say, okay, what... How, how best would the Rebbe address this issue? Right. Um, but then to do, to, 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 to have to go and to go into uncharted waters and to take necessary steps right. and that we may be wrong in. And oh, not just to say, you know what? Uh, I, I, I don't know. So therefore, I, 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 I can't. I, I, I don't know. I don't have another message or another issue to bring to, to the light because... You know, this is this is the only thing that I that I that I know how to say. Let me throw you know because you you've been bringing up the very kind of aggressive, you know, the Rebbe would never. You know, I have sources that say that you know that that from the Rebbe that are against us. Going back to the you know, I don't mind referring yeah, this to the was earlier. Just my my experiences in yeshiva. I'm agreeing with you. My experiences with mashpiyim. It was my experiences of of having a lot of you know. Uh, I try to discuss these things with them. I try to, you know, talk openly and 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 voice my uh, voice my my concerns or my right. you know growing up and and and, and in a in a post Gimel Thomas world and those years I think my Bucker years were were very difficult. Right. Um, there's a lot more that seems to be just smoothed out today, or right. there's an, a greater ease. Right. Um, for sure. That that you know because because I, I don't think people realize or want to go back. I don't want to to go back to the years between ninety two and ninety seven. I would say or ninety eight. Those were in my year in my in my in my book. Those were bad years. They were catastrophic years. They were terrible years. It's not question. And all <laughs> my experience. And by the way, they didn't they didn't end. Like a lot of the things that happened then, we are still living with today. There's no question about it. Well, you, we're, we're living with a lot of the consequences. That's what I'm those, saying. Of those. That's what I'm years. saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. And those were my formative years. Like, I'm saying you can't just like say, "Oh, they happened. It's so sad." You know, rap. The end. It didn't end. It didn't end. We're we're very much 
looking at a reality based on a lot of the the the, the actions or inactions that were taken during those years. Yeah, for sure. And it's just interesting how, besides for yourself, I mean, there's very few people willing to discuss those years and to go back and say like, can we have a frank conversation of what took place in the immediate years that followed Gimel Thomas? The, right. the oh, it was a lot of machlekes. It wasn't just machlekes. Machlekes was was the first layer of issues. Right. But there was a sense of 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 changing the the you, you, there was a huge change of what of what was told to us that would happen. Right. Between the eight, between Nun Beis and Nun Dalit. Right. And then suddenly the script flipped and suddenly no Mashiach doesn't have to be Minachayim, has to be Minamesim, should be Minamesim, et cetera, et cetera. A whole series. And that, that's only what one group of people And being went, taught. Another group of people went the other direction. Yeah. Right. But right. also being taught right. by a people and 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 and, and Mashpiyam and Rebbeim that were deeply in distress, right. deeply hurt, deeply right. shattered. And confused. And confused. And... And panicked. Panicked. And took out a lot of that... Took that <laughs> out on a lot of us. Yeah. Where I had, you know... Mashpiyam that would yell and scream at us. You're taking the Rebbe's head and dragging it through the mud. And you're schlepping the Rebbe's mm -hmm. through the mud. And this whole descriptive picture yeah. of how I'm taking... The Rebbe by a silk up and dragging him through the streets of London. And... and, 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 and London, Eve. <laughs> I was saying London of all cities. Oh, you were in Yeshiva in London. That, uh -huh. was, that was my experience there. Uh -huh. I went to several. I went to quite I th a few Yeshivas. I thought, it was, a I thought I, it was a random city. That I had radical talking. experiences in every Yeshiva. Yeah. Now, my, my experiences in Yeshiva wasn't all bad, right? Um, but I don't look back at my experience in Yeshiva with any great love. But I want to point out, I don't really speak about those years. First, of all, I didn't grow up through those years. If you want to speak more about it, I'd be happy to hear about it. But. I'm not even that personally. I'm not even that curious about those years yet. I'll tell you why. I'm more curious about the years that came before because you cannot understand what took place then without understanding what happened before. This idea that everything was working right yeah. and then suddenly it went berserk. No. If, as, if, a kid, as a child, though, it felt like every, like you said, it felt like at least the core it was, made working, sense. Was, was working just fine. Yes, but I think with time, when you look back, to me, in my view, it's like, no, 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 something, something, I don't know if it went wrong, but I, mean, I think the proof is in the pudding that, that, that something, something was off. Something was off. You know, in my view, I've been, you know, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty open about it, and the podcast is very much about this, is that I think there was an over-identification of the self, of the individual, with the Rebbe's person. You just basically, you know, Halton Zuchzum Klamka became a, a thing where you just, as long as I'm around the Rebbe and, and right. with the Rebbe on his team, yeah. then I'm good. I don't have to do anything of right. my own work, right. which is, and, which is, which is a, a rejection of the Rebbe's mission statement right. in Basi Lagani. Right. You know, right? Right, right. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's great that you bring up that mimer. That mimer, it's hard in many ways to internalize it as a chassid or as a student of the Rebbe because it's... I don't know if there's any other mimer where the Rebbe speaks of himself as a student or himself as a chassid mm -hmm. and, as a re and being reluctant of... of the Rebbe says, we are, we are in this era, in this, in this new era, you know, not by choice, not by will, Right? And then he says that we, everybody has this mission and everybody knows in their own heart that, that they're insufficient. So the chassidish way is he's not talking about him, he's talking about us. How do you know? How do you know? Why are you immediately assuming that when the Rebbe says something, he means something else? Maybe he means it honestly about himself. Maybe, maybe the Rebbe who took a year to be convinced when there was no other options, maybe he was deeply, deeply unsure about being able to do it. Yeah. Maybe 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 when he says that that's what he means. <laughs> <laughs> like isn't that a possibility? Right? And, and and somehow though if you go along those lines you're somehow less of a makusher, you're less of a believer. But it all comes you're back to the same thing because it's all about it's it's because this idea of struggling with responsibility, this idea of risking a choice without being 100% sure that it's the right thing. 
is something that we think is somehow outside of the envelope. It's something that, the, and you read the Rebbeim, you know, you read the Rebbeim talking, and I'm not even some big bucky in this stuff, but you literally dip your finger in it. You open up this Hakdam at the conscious of mine, and the Rebbe Shab telling his son, the Fitik Rebbe, to go on the scene of his fathers, to ask that they should be Matzliach. This, these were, they were deeply concerned. You know, when you're concerned, that means you don't know how it's going to work out. And the and the Rebbe Shab says you're trying you're threatening me that you're going to kick me out of Lubavitch um, if I if I don't follow your orders, kick me out of Lubavitch. I'm not going to you know I'm going to do it wherever else. Like I'm I'm going to do what I feel is true, regardless of what happens. But not because I'm convinced it's all going to work out, but because because I know that this is what I have to do, mm. right? And, and, and I'm saying the Rebbeim spoke this way about themselves. Why can't we speak this way about ourselves? Right, you you know you're, you're talking earlier about you know like people using the Rebbe like I would always tell people don't Rebbe me like don't like you know, the Rebbe said a sicha and like it shove, it, shove, shove it shove it down my throat. I, it, it it drives me away so fast. Yeah, it's disgusting. I mean, and it's, and, and it's just repul- personally for me, it's repul- it's repulsive because. And then it, when I start to go, one second, but why did the Rebbe say that? What was the context? It doesn't matter. Right. No, it's it's repulsive because because it's it's. It, it, so, so first of all, who are you? Like, 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 like we, because you have a source, therefore now it shuts down the conversation. Like Mehitesi. Second of all, second of all, is like we've created a rebbe that basically is patching every all of the course. time. You say something, patch the mar mokim patches yeah. you. You say something else, another sicha patches you, and 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 like it's all about and, and it creates a a a a a a a, um, a culture of fear of like. If I don't, if I step out of line, yeah. some some guy who knows more than me yeah. is gonna whack me. So going back to oh, the, and he's given license because to, he knows more than you. No, and he's given license license to do it in a nasty, aggressive way. Oh. So for example, for example, going back to that earlier podcast that I had with my brother, who look, he's my brother. I stand with my brother, yeah. I, and I also I also stand with everything that he said. Yeah, and I also know that he and I both consciously kept out some of the really gory details about his picked, experience I picked up on that. I picked because up on because that. I didn't want to turn it into a into a into a into a you well, know sounded kind of, to me like he had some miserable experiences in there were some Russian shivas who did terrible terrible things to him objectively yeah. not yeah. like in his imagination like said things to him in public in front of other people yeah my brother struggled with obesity and at the time today he's a very fit guy but you know, he struggled with obesity and and, and Mashpim or Rosh Hashivas made fun of him in public. Mm-hmm. Okay? And, you know, we didn't speak about it and we're not, I'm not naming names now either. It, but like, she didn't even say that. And what's the response? The response is that there's a sicha somewhere or a letter somewhere because you're saying that, that shlichas comes at a cost possibly of chinuch or, or makes chinuch more challenging, complicated. There's a sicha that the Rebbe wrote somewhere or a letter that the Rebbe said somewhere that the whole nekuda of shlichas is chinuch. So how could you say that chinuch and shlichas are at odds? And I said... So it must be that your parents, in how many years were they in, 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 in Hong Kong? Uh, almost 40. 40 years of failure. Right. They no, failed no, no. because... No, I, I'm, being, right. I'm, I'm right. mocking and I'm throwing it on its head. Right. And I think that it's... It's th- th- that that is so heartless and it's so inconsistent. No, and it got to my mother. It, it got to my parents. It got to my parents, and it was extremely hurtful. It was extremely hurtful. Listen, because, because I don't know your parents personally. They're not perfect, and they know they're not perfect. No, but they 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 they. they uh, when I was when I was by your 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 grandfather, I happened to come across, and I didn't go through his personal stuff. Okay, <laughs> I just want to tell you. That's why you hung around for twelve months. He gave me orders that if there were certain people that would show up in Philadelphia who will remain nameless. He said, Meshala, you lock the door immediately, lock both the doors, and you call me up. Do not let him into the office. I remember that, like, that, they were giving orders. Right. But I, I think he, I, I asked him about it. He showed me a letter that was written by your father to, I, I don't even remember who it was addressed to, but I just remember how, how difficult the situation in Hong Kong was at the time and asking for help and asking for, for so, 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 I just remember this. No, this my, is parents, tw- my parents asked to leave a few times. This is 20 this is years ago. I remember this letter. Right. But I don't remember all the details. Just thinking to myself at a, as a 22-year-old boy, right. Buffer, right. how hard this situation was. And this letter was written in the 90s right. or maybe even the 80s. No, I think it was the 80s. So It's the late 80s, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, well, I mean, so, one second, one second. The story, so, if, we're, if, I'm gonna, if we're gonna bring it up. Yeah. 
my parents were never sent out on Shlichus Tankang as in a permanent way. My father was there as a bacher beforehand, okay. working for the shul. He, he went out on Shlichus as like a bacher Shlichus. It started off as like a temporary couple month Shlichus with another bacher. And then it, the other bacher went back to New York and he stayed on. And he then they got a contract for a year or something. Then he, he came back and got married. Mm. And he went back with my mother to finish up the contract. And ended up staying for a My mother months. never agreed to stay. Uh-huh. Once, or never agreed to go for, for good. Like she wanted to go on Shlichus, but not to Hong Kong. Right. Okay. Once they went, I don't know all the details. And some know-it-all will tell me that they... I, I, what I've always understood, and I've heard this from, I've corroborated the general story from others, and also I trust my parents, right? right. <laughs> so for all the know-it-alls out there, they, 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 either he got his contract extended, at some point he was fired by the community. I don't know if it was from the first original contract or the next contract, he was fired from the community, and, uh, and um, basically the community wanted him out of Hong Kong. There's one shul. We mm-hmm. don't want another rabbi here. You've done your time. Thank you for your service. I don't know what ha- what politics happened. In general, they, they go through rabbis there pretty quickly. We're done with you. Out. Mm-hmm. Once the community wanted him out, there were a few, somebody that's sent from Lubavitch does not get kicked out of a city. So my parents were caught between the community telling them to get the heck out mm-hmm. and writing a letter signed by everybody in the community that was, wor- that was worth anything in the community to get the heck out. And the Rebbe's insistence that you cannot leave. I can't, cannot give in. So my parents could never leave, even though they were never sent really permanently, and even though my mother especially had never agreed to go permanently. Wow. Right. So yet they stayed. My, my mother wrote two or three times to the Rebbe to leave. Mm. And each time they were told her basically, no, you cannot leave. Okay. And so against that backdrop, of not even wanting to be there in the first place right. or not wanting to go there in the first place, although I'm sure there are many happy moments, but they never just, you know, you're always that moment of like, I never agreed to come here. Whenever you're down, you remember that, right? You remember that. Of course. Right. Okay. Against that, you have the obvious challenge of being one of the first or only, you know, at the time was a, there were others, but it was the first family of Shluchim that have kids that for them to go to another school, they need to travel to a different continent. Time zones. No, a different continent. Yeah. Okay, a different ocean. Yeah. Okay, the, the, the compromise was to go to Melbourne, Australia, which was 10 hours away because it's a similar time zone. But it's 10 hours away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so, like if something happens, an emergency, my parents won't be there for 24 hours. Yeah. Okay. So against all of that, my brother and I are talking about the challenge of, of, of adapting from that world to, you know, from the world of Hong Kong, which is a very different world. This is so... And then someone has the audacity yeah. to say, by the way, people who, but it's the, the so... people who... The people who came out against it all live in places with multiple chinuch options, it's obviously. So... But one second. Yeah. They all go, but there's a letter somewhere or a sikha somewhere that says that the whole point of shlichus is chinuch. And my answer is, nobody was thinking that. Nobody was thinking that. You now Googled some 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 sikha that aligns with your opinion, and I'm not saying it's not true. I'm not yeah. saying it's not true. But don't now try to convince me and gaslight me that when people were going to Ekvelt in the world, yeah. they were thinking about Chinuch, and that's why they were going. And therefore, also, somehow, now your brother brought those terrible, abusive situations on himself. And, <laughs> right. he ha- and he's to blame right, because we can't look at the, the system. Right. And or or the system that he was a part of, and look at the 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 imperfections. And in every system, there's imperfections. Right. But I don't want to dwell. So I mean, I, I'm just I'm just fleshing out that kind of aggressive, a very like very like very heavy handed. It's and a it's knee like, jerk. And it's like it's like if, if that was if that's a rebbe to you, I don't know how you live with him. I certainly can't live with that kind of that kind of slapping relationship where like where like you whack people out like with without heart without heart you're talking about a situation that's very 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 real and you just come with a letter that you found on the internet or a sikh you found on the internet and decide that somehow that makes your life makes your boy more comfortable so now you now you knock now you knock the story down i don't want to talk about that because i think most people agree that that's incorrect right 
I would talk about something that's more subtle and in a way more pernicious, right? Something that's, I guess you could call it passive aggressive, but I don't know if it's passive aggressive. It's just, it's just more subtle, more pernicious. When you're about to do something, you have a project. You're a shliach with chabaras. You want to do something. Yeah. That's a little bit, let's say, different or new. And then someone comes and say, what would the Rebbe say about this? Oh. Oh. Hold on a second. Yeah. One second. That is, less, that is less aggressive because that person also doesn't know. Because yeah. if he knew, he would tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't know. So then he goes, what did I say about this? What's wrong with that? Is there something wrong with that? Like, what's wrong with, with, with asking or, or, or bringing up to someone, you know, would you be, or would you be okay bringing this to the Rebbe, something like this? And I feel, I feel that, let's even say that the, the motives of the person who brings it up is, is pure. Yeah. Let's assume, okay? What that does... And I'm not, I'm not sure that it makes it wrong, but I think there's a cost to it. And I do think it's wrong. But even if you don't think it's wrong, there's a cost to it. What that does is it makes everybody err on the side of caution. Right. And real caution. Yeah. Right? Because now you're not only worried about what the Rebbe say, but you're worried about what other people would say about what the Rebbe would uh, say. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so everybody just basically stays in line. Right. So... And it's like it's like well, think, how are we, how are you going to how are you going to adapt to a to like you said new problems new situations new new things going on new conditions if you're constantly scared to to make a mistake right you can make a mistake yeah so I think that the question in and of itself is not a, a, a damaging question. It's, it's okay if we are shluchim of the Rebbe. Not only is it okay, I think that it's incumbent upon us to say, you right. know, is this in line with the Rebbe's vision? Right. Um, because the Rebbe did, does, did, does, and will have a vision uh, in how he would like his uh, movement called the Chabad Lubavitch movement to be, right? We could, we could agree on that. It's not, right. uh, you know, because, because when you don't have that, you have, you know, let's all, you know, smoke meth and, right. and, 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 and in, a, in a circle in the name of their habit. No, that, that doesn't fly. Right. However, you know, that's, I'm taking something to, to a extreme point. Once Wait. the question, but I, I could look back at the person, what would their ever say about this? You know what? I'm not sure. Right. But I think based on my limited ability to survey the situation to, to, to comprehend what the challenge is and what my end goal is, I am willing to take the risk, okay? So long as it's within the the the, the confines of, uh, or the parameters of Shulchan Aruch, right? Right. right. And, and I'm not uh, doing anything which is Hepa Chalacha. Right. I'm going to run with this. And maybe, right. maybe it is all a mistake. Right. What do you think? Every single program that we do that's exactly like the 4,000 shlichim that did it before us. And I got my cookie cutter version of how to do shlichis right. and the exact version of how to sing Haidu in the morning on Shabbos morning and Ha'adar Sa'amuna. Right. That works for every Chabad house? No, it doesn't. Right. And the, 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 what, what happens though is when we fall into that trap of thinking, right. we're also comparing ourselves to the successes of others and we feel like a failure right. in everything that we do. Right. So it, it starts from that, that Nakuda. Right. Yeah, that, that focal starting point of just like I'm a unique person, so too is my I'm just using Schlichus as an example, but you could do it in the way that I raise my kids. Right. In the way that in the way the in, 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 in the way that my Shabbos table runs. In the way so somebody was telling me recently, it's by a disgusting Shabbos table. <laughs> so what was so disgusting? What did they they serve Chaza on the table? What's with your friends and the way they talk? No, well, it, was, it wasn't a friend. Was, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Generally, they didn't sing a nikin and they right. var and they, right. Okay, so you, you just took a whole group of people, a family, and all their guests, and you you wrote them off as disgusting. You, you put them in the garbage. Exactly. <laughs> and you feel great about yourself. Right. You feel great about yourself. Right. But these are people that are striving to do Shabbos in their way. Right. They're striving to be wholesome in their way, and I happen to know these people. Right. So, I, 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 I don't think that their Shabbos table is disgusting. It doesn't look like the Shabbos table that you wanted or that you would right. like for yourself. But it's... it's uh, right. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, there, 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 there's something. There's something about you know. The, I guess the question then becomes: Do you think we're more judgmental than other groups? I don't. I, I think that the chalal, any religion has a a form of, of you, self self assessment, right? Who's in the tribe and who's out of the what tribe? What do you mean more? Which, which other groups are you talking about? Other uh, other? Let's, let's narrow it down, right? right. So, so there's religions as a whole. Right. I'm sure that uh, if you look at other religions or any tribe, right? Right. Who who is safe for the tribe and who's unsafe for the tribe? Who will protect right. our 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 group and the focal point, and who is a danger to our group at a focal right. point. And you can narrow it down as as Jews. So we like either saying, have this internal. Are, are, you, are you on the P or on the L of the? Are you which column are you on? The profit column or the loss column? Right? Are you are you a net boon right, to right, our right, yeah, group or are you a yeah, net loss? Yeah. You're not a net boon part of net loss. Get <laughs> yeah. Not only get get out of here, but I'm going to do everything in my power to, to crush to, you. To at least make sure that you know that, in my opinion, <laughs> you do not. Yeah, uh, uh, you do not deserve right a seat at our table. Right, right, right. I, I, there's there's a lot of that. But I mean, I, is it is it is it a Lubavitch thing? I, I frankly I I look I don't think it's a Lubavitch thing. I, I think if you're going to be intellectually honest, I think it's a common it's a common thing. There's there's and in many ways, look for for what it's worth, I wouldn't care to do this podcast if I thought it was a bunch of Mishigoyim who had were, were not acting in good faith and say, like, okay, like, why would I waste my time? Like, I could just say bye. I could just like live my own life. No, you, 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 you're you deeply, deeply connected to Lubavitch. I mean, but, but if it, I, but if I think, if I think it's, if I think it's like this crazy place, this, this base Michigan right. that acts like in a ridiculous way compared to everybody else, why am I like, okay. Right. Bye. But you, you, you I don't think that. No, I don't, th I don't think that. And, I, and in many ways, if I if I want to if I want to sometimes kind of wax poetic or push back the other way or just kind of balance my thinking, there are many indications that it's quite the opposite. There's a there is a strike like there, there are many people who will tell you, look, I don't agree with what you're saying, but you know, um, yeah, there, but there's are people. One second, let's be honest. I've, I I'm on some of the same WhatsApp <laughs> groups as you, where you have these loud mouths. No, it's not just loud mouths. In my opinion, and yeah. yes, I'm talking to you, okay? <laughs> even though you write in Hebrew. No, he doesn't listen, to those. He doesn't okay. listen anymore. That's fine. <laughs> you think of yourself as a gatekeeper. You think that you and you alone are holding up the covet and you are holding up the, 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 the very foundational pillars of Lubavitch. You're not. You're not. <laughs> so get over yourself. And it's not only him. It's all the silent people that are poking fun. And, and instead of it being brave enough, it no, 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 it doesn't you'll always get criticism. It doesn't, it doesn't you should accept me. the criticism. It doesn't bother me. Because some of the criticism is healthy. It, do, it doesn't, look, when somebody calls, look, it doesn't, bo it doesn't bother me. Uh, maybe it doesn't bother me because it hasn't been pointed yet. Maybe because I haven't seen the worst of it. It hasn't come to me. Maybe it's just behind my back. Hey, look, it doesn't bother me. It, look, look you, ha you have to be fair. Ten years, you know, after after the Rebbe Marash passed away, there was ten years with Rebbe Rashab and his brother, the Razov, for a couple of years, but the Rashab was there, and he was saying chassidus, kind of being makabel pedianus, but not. It was it was complicated. He didn't officially assume they the title. Flux, yeah. He didn't officially assume the title of Rebbe for ten years. By the way, historically, those were looked at as dark years. No, no, in worse, than, worse than that, the Friedrich Rebbe called it Churban Lubavitch, the Lubavitch. destruction wow. of Lubavitch. Okay, wow. okay, and. And that was with the Rebbe Rashab there. Yeah. The Rebbe Rashab, I don't know if at the point, I, the, at, already then, but soon after had a son. So there was continuity. Just continuity. Yeah. He, had, he had assumed the responsibility to some extent, and it was still considered Khorban Lubavitch. Yeah. Right? We are now 30 years after Gimel Tamas. Yeah. There, there is no successor. No. Nope. Right? Um, so if you use the analog to then, we're at least 3x Khorban Lubavitch. Okay, and it, it, it's more because it goes exponentially. It doesn't, you know, it, it gets worse and worse with time, yeah. obviously, right? And so it, it's easy to come and, you know, poke holes and say, or, or poke out, you know, like, uh, this is crazy, this is crazy. These people, like, I think, we, we, like, we have, to, we, have to be, we have to be fair and say, look, like, I'll, I'll tell you, for example, somebody, somebody reached out to me at the beginning when I, when I started the podcast. Somebody reached out. A guy that I know peripherally, probably knew him less than I knew you. Well, I knew him about the way I knew you from before. 
Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I met him in camp back in the day. If if I called him up, he would know my name. But like, he's a shliach somewhere. Like, you know, not like we haven't been in, in touch. Mm-hmm. But he knows who I am. I know who he is. He's much older than me. And he sends me this beautiful note. I thought it was beautiful. Where he's like, look, I understand what you're doing because I understand the need for it. People need this kind of conversation. But understand that this is a very sensitive and dear subject to many of us. You know, just treat it with respect. Please, or, and he didn't say it in a, in a kind of constant way. Like, just, you know, please, try, please treat it with the respect it deserves or something like that. Yeah. And I was very touched by it. Yeah. Because, because... Well, I think you have been very, very respectful. I think that... I appreciate that, but I'm saying... How many podcasts have you done? Because I listened to 30. I've released 30. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... I, I, I think that you are doing a phenomenal job. But I still think that no matter how sensitive you'll be, there are still people that don't want to have this conversation because it's very, very uncomfortable Look, on many levels and it causes a level of fear. And that fear is the fear of uncertainty. And that's the fear of the doubts that plagued me in my deepest, darkest thoughts before I go to sleep. And that's the thoughts of what will be. And because they're scary, I just don't want to discuss them. And we've had this problem for a very long time of not wanting to discuss a lot of these issues. And guess what? There are a lot of carbonus and a lot of damage that happened because, so while I agree sensitivity right. is very important, but we need to we need to talk about this stuff because this, it's not just, because everybody throws it on the kids. Because what's going to be with our kids? For no, that, for no, that, no, for the kids. No, it's not the kids. It's, nothing it's, to, it's me and you. I want to be, it's me and you. I want to be the best chassid that I can be. I want to be the best yid that I can be. I want to be the best husband that I can be. I want to be the best father that I can be. I want to be the best human being that I can be. I want to invest the right things in myself. And today we call that authentic living. I know that it's a buzzword and right. certain buzzwords, I did not say the word trauma one day today because that became an evil word. I appreciate that. Because, you know, there's certain... Uh, uh, well, it's been it's been abused. Yes, and, and, and trauma I, has been traumatized at this point. I, I, true, <laughs> and yet there is yeah, trauma. There, yeah, so, of course, there is. So, so like any like any word that's overused and becomes a platitude, um, right? We, we 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 need to to bring it back to what it really is. Right. Not all, <laughs> not all love is equal. Right. Uh, not all hate is equal, and not all trauma is equal. Correct. So let's let's keep things that, and I agree with that. Yeah. Um, there are people that will hear us say that, though. Say, look, one second. We say, oh, these are the guys that are that are mocking, deep, terrible, um, distressing, and 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 horrific experience that happened. No, no, we're not. We're not saying that. I'm not saying. That. We're not saying that. But but trauma has become the word trauma has become an overused word. In I, I think when you ascribe trauma to to things that aren't traumatic, aren't, aren't no, aren't major and serious and. F- meet certain criteria which has to be very specific by definition yeah when you call that trauma you are mo- you are mocking yes, 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 real yes. trauma i just want to i just want to put that out there before we somebody <laughs> takes this and, and makes it you know nobody's going uses to that clip. <laughs> nobody's going to don't yeah, worry well, i don't Read all the nafs in our you know they're mocking anybody who we, we waited too long to open up that door for those people to yeah the, the troublemakers will be bored by now we're not we're not we're not saying that but what but but i lost my train of thought what were you saying that that you were you were saying that this is how you know it's a good conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you, you know, from, from, from you were saying you know you were you you were say, you were saying that pe- that that people don't want to open up the Pandora's box. They're very very scared yeah. because and people don't want to talk about the traumas that are well. That's but not not they don't want to talk about those that those things that are very very uncomfortable. And at least for me, I have found that when I don't right there's a form of of suppressing and suffocation that i go through that is that is very unhealthy so i mean look it's a fair i don't know if you meant it as a critique it's a fair critique maybe maybe to some extent i kind of limit it to the softer kind of edges and don't go to the actual demons that are haunting people i my kind of feeling is that the demons that you're talking about everybody everybody knows what they are you know what I mean? We won't even say it though. We won't even express. Like, I, I I know I I've expressed it many times. It's I mean I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but people the, the sense that people are deeply deeply uncertain. Yeah. And deeply worried. Yeah. People feel it in their bones. Yeah. Right. So to kind of to me it's I, I feel like you want to have a conversation that's right not just a that's not no but I 
to deal with it. I don't want to just a conversation where it's a cry of pain. I want a conversation to understand how we got here and what it means so you can better process it, right? I don't think a podcast is a place for people to just get up and vent their deepest anguish. Although I'm not, if you want to say something, I'm, I'm more than happy to hear it. I don't think we're it. venting. I think we're just having a... a, a, a no, it sounds like you want to go even, you feel like we're, we're only scraping the surface and you want to go deeper. That's what it sounds like. I always want to be proud. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I'm just saying, I, I, I'm not holding you back. I just don't, I, it, 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 you could go every podcast and start with like, here's the thing that I think is a problem. Here's what I think is a solution. But let, let's be very, very brute about it. And I, no, I, I, and I don't, I don't think that will serve right. you or your audience right. uh, any good. But I do think that you are, have at least opened up the, 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 the doors to what what was over the last thirty years, um, or close to thirty years, we didn't discuss it. It's, what it's, does it mean to live today thirty years without a rebbe, without a physical rebbe? But I say, I say without a. What do you mean? You don't go to oil. You don't have a rebbe. Yeah. I do have a rebbe. But to me, that that this idea is not only not not optimal. We're we're in a korban of a korban. They try they, they try to have it both ways. It, you know, it's we, great. We, we, it's have a, we, we have we we have we have a rebbe, but we also we have a rebbe today, just like then. But we also wish we were back then, and not today. Why? If, if, if today is just as good or better than then, why would you rather? Why are you happy that you were then and not now? If you really believe that your kids are growing up in better times and as bigger chassidim as you were. Yeah. And with a deeper connection to the Rebbe, why? What better why are you, times? What no, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, if you really no, believe it's it, such a, it's, no, but if you really it's believe it's such nonsense. Well, I, and nobody really one believes second, it. One second, I do believe it, but on different terms. I believe it in the sense that at the end of the day, for someone growing, when you're growing up, is the best time for you to grow up, because that's what God has determined. Right, that you will be born. Listen, right. I will, I will tell you this. Throughout my Bakr years, I fantasized about having a time machine, right, and going back. That I could be by one more fabring right. as a buffer, as an 18-year-old, as a 17-year-old, as somebody who's who's um, um, you know just to be part of it, to stand at adult level and to have or to or to go into yechidus or to have just one moment. I had this 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 Bensi to say it was a fantasy it was it was it was a it was something that plagued me, right? And I was in. Deep, deep anguish. And when I talk about it now, I, it still invokes right. a lot of feelings. Because the fact is, I felt cheated. I felt that things were stolen from me. And furthermore, all the older guys, and this is something that still degrees, they hold that over you as, oh, but you weren't there. The chafs. You think the chafs. And you remember the... So on one hand, I love, I love hearing it and I whenever I hear a story of the Rebbe or something that took place or any history in Lubavitch I gravitate towards it right. because I I love history it gives you all. roots it but gives, it gives you roots. me roots but on the other hand there's always a feeling that I get of and and, and there and you weren't there right. and therefore somehow you have less of a you you have less of a voice in this conversation because you weren't right. there absolutely um, you know it's, sometimes I watch some of the finished products of some of the videos that come out right and i get the same picture of it here's right. what happened in 88 it was a beautiful day and sucks for you that you weren't there adios I mean, and i don't know if that's what they're trying to do but we have to we have to contend with with they're the, not trying to look i, I want to be fair to you i want to be fair to them they're not trying to, they're not trying to mock you with those videos no, no, i don't no, think no. but but they are also not trying to in many ways a lot of those videos have the assumption that video is this gift that God gave us. It's a, it's a, it's a small, the time machine that you dreamed of when you yeah. were younger. This is a small kind of time machine that will allow you to travel back to the memes and have that moment. We need those videos. Those videos are, but, but I, but, but the feeling that it's leaving you with is because you, it's not, it's not, it has to be, it has to be, con meaning it has, it has to be contextualized. What's the Uvechein? What's the overhang of this video? If we constantly, we cannot keep on talking from both sides of our mouth that we live in the time that we're meant to live. And this is the best time for us to live. And this is the only time that for us to live. This is when God decided for us to live, yeah. to live. And then at the same time, our interactions, our storytelling of the Rebbe, let's say, our narrative of the Rebbe is always old footage from the 80s. Mm -hmm. 
right? Like, you know, you talk about the things that set you off. Like when I'm sitting in shul, and I'm, you know, the speech begins. Okay, that already in itself kind of sets me off. But then, like, the speech begins. We're like in a sicha in 1978. Yeah. I thought, what is this? You know how long ago 1978 was? Do you even know who the president was in 1978? Yeah. Like, like, do you, do you know? Like, like, it, it's so long ago. Why do you think invoking the date makes it relevant? You should be finding out what ideas the Rebbe's, the Rebbe built up. They were built ideas. They didn't just tell you how to operate. He didn't just give an operating manual, uh, you know, instruction manual, what to do here and there. He built up ideas of how to look at the world and how for us to exe- to explore the world further and to navigate the world. Right? That's what you should be talking about. And there that's is, there, listen. There is a lot of that that exists. I agree. Um, I agree. I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm just there, saying there, that's why those videos I think set you off that way because when you just see a video without any context and maybe you, there's a need for it, but when all, many of the Rebbe videos are, this is what happened back then. This is a bracha I got back then. This yeah. is what happened in Tavshim Mem Hey or whatever. Yeah. And therefore, what? what? What do I do with that? So are you are you brushing? Well, yeah, you just again. took me on a t- you just took me on a time machine. Right now the now the video is done and I'm back here. Now right. what? Now what? So 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 there's there's a leap, and it's a leap that I think we have to take. But it's such a hard leap, of how do I translate that into, into, into my own sense of of of. This has this is the idea to me personally, and this lesson or this story or this I can somehow translate that personally. Um, it's it's deeply personal, that and it, but it's also very hard. And Ad Hayyim, thirty years after, at the age of forty two, I'm not content with it. And I go, I'm 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 fighting city hall, if you will. I'm kicking against the inevitable. Right. And and every year that goes by, I I, I I I am. It's not that I'm more at peace with it because, like you said, and I agree with you fully, we cannot turn back time. And how do we make today the best day possible? Today right. is the day that Hashem has given me. Today is I have the strength to do my mission in this world. Right. Um, but I also am trying to translate uh, uh, the, 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 one of the most fundamental parts of Chassidus, which is the connection between Rebbe and Chassid, right? Because if that wasn't important, we could just learn Chassidus, right? Right. I don't. I don't have to call myself. I have a Rebbe. What, what's it? What's it? What, what, and, and what makes this Rebbe my Rebbe? Right? I happen to love, love the Frida Kerber's writings. Love. By the way, he's your Rebbe too, just saying. Uh, but, but one second. I never saw the Frida Kerber. To That's me, the Frida Kerber, the only difference between the Frida Kerber and the Alter Rebbe is that there's p- more pictures of the Frida Kerber and the Alter Rebbe. Right. And, 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 and I mean, and, but I don't think that's entirely true because the the because my f- grandfather saw the Friedrich Rebbe. Oh, besides yeah, that, yeah, no, yeah. but not only that, the Friedrich Rebbe lived in a time closer to yours. True. The Friedrich Rebbe lived six, you know, five generations or yeah, five generations after the Alter Rebbe, which means that a lot of the things, like think about the Friedrich Rebbe's Zechreinus, are about yeah, yeah. the Alter Rebbe. And even once so, so the Alter Rebbe at the, was was an innovator in many ways. He was the pioneer. The Fidik Rebbe is talking, and I, he said the Sichis. The Sichis no, is I, about a culture. Uh, about I the, love the Mamar 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 in Yiddish. Yeah. Okay. Which, but which, I, was, which I've was, had, I've had people mock me, by the way. That's not real Chassidus. <laughs> First of all, screw you. Who are you? To, again, determining. Because it's not Imre Bina. Uh, because I, it's not Ayin Base. Because it's I, not something that I can't, that, that, that I'm not, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, tapped into Rabbi Yoel Shirin and, and listening from him 10 years ago that he's going to tell me how... It's something that makes sense to me. You, you so now get, that's less of real chassidus. How, 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 but where does that come from? you, you got to get new friends, man. Again, <laughs> I talk to a lot of people. Just I say, speak to a lot of people. Say, Not you know, everybody's my friend. You have a lot of angry but guys I, in your I, corner. I, listen. I don't have too many people in my corner, to be honest with you. I don't have too many not, people, but I just don't friends. let them these in. Are, these are not friends. I'm just saying. But this is what I've heard because right. I try to share with right. what's new. What do you know that's right. I try to share with right, 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 right. I'm on the Taurus Menachem train. Right. I'm on the Igris Kodesh train. Right. I tried uh, Parshat Lukut for a while, and one day I'll get back to that. Right. Uh, I'm on right. Daf Yomi. Right. Um, you know, there's okay. different... Okay. Okay. I love Daf Yomi. <laughs> Me and Moshe Leib great. I know, I know, I know. I know. And by the way, saying what happened to him, whoever <laughs> I tell it to, says, 
Also, you're doing Rambam? Yeah. yeah, I do Rambam. Perakachat. Perakachat is, is for Bible. <laughs> <laughs> look, that's, look, that's, I, look. I, I mean, look. We, 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 and then, we, but we, at, at a certain point, yeah, you have to be able to look at yourself and your life and to tell certain people go pound sand because I am not here to prop up your group. I am not here to prop up your sense of, oh, we have one more loyal soldier in our army. We have one more guy who we could be proud of. All right. Right? Because no, it's, he, it's, 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 it's worse than that. He does exactly the way, and he says exactly the things that we want him to say. It's worse so than that. Were... It's worse than that. It's one more guy who doesn't question our ways. Yeah. Well, I'm not that guy. Um, I'm just saying they, they don't need to be proud of you. They just want you to be there and not question it. One more person who goes along you, with you. Question, uh, let me ask you a question. But, 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 but leave these people alone. I, these people don't bother me. These people are not the deepest demons. You can ask me a question. But They're they, robbed in hand, though. But, 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 these, yeah, but when you talk about, if you want to talk about you know, real stuff, you yeah. want to talk about the kishkes, the stuff that keeps you up at night, it's not these morons. No, It's not no. these morons. It's the stuff that at the end of the day, you know, like, like whenever you have, let's say, everybody has financial stress from time to time at least. You know, yeah. Everybody likes to make believe like they're all flying high. But, you know... I mean, most people actually don't do that online. Maybe people do it, but you know, everybody deals with financial stress, other kinds of stress, uh, relationship stress, stress with the kids. There's always stress with yourself, right? The the instinct is always to blame, 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 and then under the covers, the reason why it hits under the covers yeah. is because that's when you know you're to yourself. I can't blame all of this no, on somebody else of course not. I'm responsible of course. and now I panic and by the way <laughs> because because where do I shift this I can't go anywhere it's me at right. the end of the day it's me I need to figure out how to make money or to to cover the bills yeah. I need to figure out how to take care of my family I need to take care of, of my relationships and so on it's on me and that's when it that's when it gets real so like a lot of it's distraction all this talk yeah I, I, it's very annoying it's very annoying but if you're talking about what's real yeah. what's real is the uncertainty what's real is in my view I, I can't speak for you but what's real is like am i even you know am i even committed to the right group do i even know for a fact yeah. with the certainty that i want mm. that this is the truth because not to blame it on other people but because the certainty that used to exist at mm. least that existed for a while yeah. which was mashiach is coming by x date and if we do X, Y, Z, Mashiach will come, must come by a certain time, yeah. which created a certain kind of certainty. That's gone. It was. It was. Now you're, we're, so saying you, that, we're, saying our, we're saying that we're saying that in our forties and your your late thirties, right? Mid thirties. Mid thirties. We're saying that we're saying late, that late as 30s. mature adults, right? This, I was a little child, and it was. It was. It was not just promised. It was cemented, right? That the Geula is, is is upon us, right? That Gimel Thomas will not happen, cannot happen, cannot happen, will not happen. There's no even. There. I, I I think part of the shock is I really didn't believe it was happening as it was happening, and I was a pretty intelligent kid. You're not the only one. You're not the only one. There are people that have told me that have reached out to me about this podcast or in general in life, and have told me that this is their most foundational religious conundrum, because in their head, if you cannot explain why Mashiach didn't come. Or if you accept that the Rebbe passed away and Mashiach didn't come, and that the, the certainty that was promised didn't pan out, I don't believe in God anymore. It's right. become so kind of it's like it's become it was wound so tight that if you cut if you cut it at any point, the whole thing unwinds right. and, and and it falls apart. I, I haven't I didn't go that far of not believing in God, but it, it no, took but I'm me, saying other people. It, it took me no, well, it took me to 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 really 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 uh, deep and painful places. And, and, was uh, did, did the Rebbe say something that he didn't know? Did the Rebbe say that it was Rebbe wrong? Was the Rebbe right? But we screwed it up. You want to know what sets me off? <laughs> when people make the announcement, Alan Leibn on Alan Dason, everybody knows and everybody believes and everybody. You know what I believe? <laughs> you declare? <laughs> you don't even Who know. Gives you, you, you are right. That guy doesn't even know what he believes. What gives you the right? <laughs> but that, but to challenge that became somehow that you are less than you are right. you are you, it's a filter in the iskashas it's a filter in the muna it's a filter in 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 in, in, in being a lababacher sorry that doesn't work for me first of all stop telling me what i believe <laughs> stop telling me what i believe 
because that's obnoxious. But I think I think I, I think if I'm being you honest, don't see it. I of course I see it, but I think I think you are. I think I think you are shifting. Time. My whole life, I grew up with Allah Vason and Allah Glavin and 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 the, the, the declarations of this is. Policy. I'm not, this is what we believe, and fine, we but, all know. But I'm not. I'm not higher than that. I'm not. Not bothered by that. My point is, you I have to move past it. That's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, 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 We're like, there. No, I'm just, no, no. I'm not. I'm not saying what you have to do. But I, like, you're asking me, um, like, what keeps me up at night is, you know, what what am what am I up to? Meaning, do I believe in this? Am I am I going? Am I taking the easy route? Am I just going with the flow? Am I, you know, or is my questioning just the easy route? Like at the end of the day, you know, you, you want to take life seriously to some extent. I was never one who questioned for the sake of questioning. I, I, it took me a long time to even get where I am here today. No, if not, anything, by nature, I'm more of a, of a, of a, of a I, I, I like black and white. I, not, I like it, but black and white doesn't work for me. I'm not it suspecting you. I'm not accusing you of anything. Just to be clear, I'm not accusing you of, of looking to to like to like stir up problems. Mm -hmm. But you're saying the problem, the questions are. You're asking me about other people, and I, I don't really care about that anymore. I, I, I mean, your I audience, like you're talking to a large, hopefully a yeah. large audience of other Lubavitchers, right? That are, I can imagine, at least some of them are grappling with this kind of stuff, right? And so, they're grappling too with. My message to them, my message to them, not that I make this podcast as some kind of, I'm not trying to galvanize a group of people or anything. Right? Believe me or don't believe me on that, I don't care. But I, my message to them is not that those people are stupid. My, like, because either you, either you know that or you don't know that, whatever. My message to you is if what is discussed on this podcast between me and you, between me and, me and other guests, mm -hmm. if the ideas that come up, something that resonate with you or something that you know how many people have told me I've been thinking about this yeah. for so long and I always thought I always thought that it was off limits or I was only you know Meshuggah the only Kaifer the only this only that and like okay there's people there's I people. have taken value <laughs> every one of the, your podcasts no 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 I'm not I'm not just trying to stoke your ego dude I appreciate it how do you mean every one of your podcasts I have taken value I've learned something I don't agree with every one of your guests Right. Um, some of them I disagree with. Some of them I don't see through their the, the, the lens of how they see it. But I find every one of your podcasts are important and valuable. And it's not just about having a thought or a discussion. I think that these are uh, uh, th th these these discussions are top priority in this day and age because without it. We're, 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 we're spinning our wheels and, and I'm tired. I'm tired of, it's 30 years. It's 30 years of, of being in a place of, in, in being in a place of, of, of. Tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow will be better. It, it just, just hold on a little bit longer. Just hold on a little bit longer. Listen, tomorrow will be better because that's, as, it, this has nothing to do with the Lubavitcher. This it has to do with being a Yid. And no, a Yid but, has but, to hope for optimism. No, but when you're waiting for the and, next and, when you're waiting for the next day to come, when you've given up on today and you're hoping for tomorrow, somehow, you know, like it's not even about tomorrow necessarily. It's that this moment is is given up on. Mashiach, you know, like it's if Mashiach doesn't come, then today is a waste of time, kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's it, it's it, also playing God. It's it's so much playing God and and, those, and, and, and 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 not having like we talk so much, especially in the last right. in the last. I would say five years, there's been a massive betachen train, right? Right. And I'm on that train, by the way, big okay. time. Okay. Shar betachen has helped me in in. It's in, good stuff. It, it's 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 gewaldic. Right. Before that, I was reading. There's a book in good hands. Right. I read that cover to cover probably without exaggeration 25 times. Uh huh. You know what I'm talking about? It's from Sifas in English. Yeah, yeah, sure. All about betachen. Right. So huge amounts of. Uh, of, of the Rebbe's teaching are based on this idea of betachen, right? Sure. So what betachen tells us is that, and, and to be a person of betachen is that Hashem is running every aspect of my life and every aspect of the world, okay? Right. And I'm in the, his hands, I'm right. in the Abishter's hands, and the Abishter is running the world in the best way possible. Right. So that is something that I could that I could wrap my, my, my heart around. 
that is something that helps me daven better. It helps me learn better. It helps me be kinder to other people. It helps me to take a, a, a nasty comment better. I'm not perfect with this. I just had an incident when somebody said something nasty and I took it personal and right. I had to, to flush it out. But, but it's helping me navigate life better because there is a God right. who's infinite. There's me who's finite. And there's the connection which uh, is between us, which is, which, is, which is enveloped in this idea of betachem. Right. But somehow, right, when it comes to uh, Mashiach and when it comes to where we are today, that all goes out the window, right? We're going to determine right now that, that he has to come this second. Now, well, but, but that's why, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. You're, you're going to put that on the Rebbe, right? That the no, Rebbe was the one who pushed no, it. No, 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 I'm not going to. I, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I mean, look, if, you, if, if one is going to be honest, there's no question that the Rebbe did emphasize Mashiach, and especially in the later years, spoke about it very emphatically. Yep. Okay, but I I don't believe you will find anywhere there that that should lead to the conclusions you made. Besides, for the fact that I do understand, I do sympathize with people that were living in that space and hearing from the Rebbe, who was such a powerful presence yeah. and such a holy presence speaking about it on a regular basis i can see why it would overpower their own senses and that is in many ways the reason i have sympathy for people i disagree with on this front because i think there is or people that lived back then I, I, it's easy to judge when you have the luxury of distance or when you know it's dissipated and you're able to kind of look at it more rationally but when you're living in the moment and there was standing on the beam and talking about this and the way right. he's talking about it again and again and again and again, this thing to like, you know, but no, I, I, fundamentally, I do not believe th there's a difference between the two. There's a difference between the two. I think, if, in fact, it has made a com terrible distortion where I, I say it all the time, where like you'll talk to people and they're very reasonable about everything. Like they're not a bunch of hippies from Tzvas who are high on pot and talk about Mashiach and Rabbi Nachman and Parnassah yeah. all in this kind of weird, tripped out way. Yeah. No, they talk about life very down to earth, where the kids are going to school, uh, Parnassah, uh, like how they get along with their wife and yeah. so on. Very down to earth. It comes to Mashiach suddenly, whoop, up there, right? And and that is just a distortion. That's a distortion. That's and it's 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 also it's a it's a it's a it's a form of I would say I would think cognitive dissonance where your mind is operating in two different ways, and just you're not you're just there's a there's there's a disconnect there within your own brain. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's the look. But I agree it's a problem. I agree it's a problem. Look, we have to be we have to be real. We have to be real. We cannot live. We cannot every time we we come up, you know, there's this famous song of uh, was in Chaim Fogelman. It was from back in the day. Like you would not tell us falsehoods. Oh my god, don't. No, but but now forget you talk about, about by the way, no, you talk about talk, talk, that whole tkufa, the whole um um that whole songbook, that whole uh, playlist of Gimel Thomas songs. I'm talking from the Dalad, from the days through after with a Tehillim and Rebbe I, Rebbe. I, I despise those songs so much. Right. I can't stand them. They they bring me back to such a bad place. Okay, but forget and about people love it. They say it Rebbe, oh, Rebbe. Do you understand? We were singing that in Nun days. Right. In Ganesh New York. I was right. 10 years old and the Rebbe's watching from his room on the camera and somebody runs down and says the Rebbe's watching it and we're like oh, what do we do and then two years go by and Shema Yisrael is on the beep, on the beepers and uh and there's there's I'm trying to to, to Bensi I'm trying to paint you these were bad times okay I, I, you know, and people want to make them as as as, as rose colored and, and he's a nice guy, Chaim Vogelman. I'm sure he's a nice no, guy. No, no, I'm not but talking those, about Chaim that playlist, he wouldn't give us hell. And then at the heavens no. at two in the morning. You're missing, you're missing, and all you're missing those my point. You're missing my point. That uh, stuff. You're missing your point. The, the, the line there is, he would not tell He would not tell us falsehoods. He would not tell us lies. And he would not tell the future if he... I, he hasn't I seen remember. it with his eyes. How, How would he have the answers uh, to all the questions he was asked? And okay. if he says she's coming, he'll, he'll be, be here at last. Yeah, okay. I know. Okay, okay. <laughs> we, all, we both know these words. Okay, now... 
I, I don't know Chaim Fogelman. I don't know his motivations. I don't even know when the song was composed. That this, was, this was Nun Hei. Okay, this, so was, this was the year okay, after. So my point, my point is 29 not, years you know, My point is not whether or not I like guitars or not. My point, or I like his voice or his They lyrics. blasted that song on Kingston. That's though. not the point, and though. We, well, going, the point. Let's see. Yeah. we, who are grappling with what... What do you mean? But you told us... Right. You told us... And promised us, first of all, you promised us that if we just say another paractillum, right. if we just say another paractillum, then, 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 then somehow the is going to get out of the stroke. So that in itself was, I, I don't know why they did that to us. I guess everybody was like, let's pull out all the ammo that we can. But you took a bunch of kids and had them say tillum for two years. We, I said more tillum. Till today, you should know, I have a very, very hard time saying tillum. Shabbos Mavarkham, I struggle with it because it brings me back to Kofiotes. Mo hafti say the sechel chol mem menachem and cross sotin and then another and kinderlach if you're just gonna say one more pin right. it, it, it's gonna be the goal and now and the rebbe's gonna get up and the rebbe's gonna come in right. this is what happened you know, I, this happened to us I understand and this was this was this was this was hell this was hell and those years afterwards and 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 the fighting didn't help at all by the way. Right. There was, if you think we are fighting today, <laughs> non hey, non non bav, non zayin was just, it was, it was, it was chaos. It was, it was bitter, bitter, bitter. I'm familiar. Yeah, the defamation, the hatred, the the the. I mean, it was it was bad times. So I look at those times as and and and, I try not to feel sorry for myself, but I also recognize, hey, those were my formative years. Those were my bar years. Right. And and, and on top of all that, not getting clarity from. Armashpian, not dealing with like, hey, one second. I, I'm asking you a question. And I, I remember nobody can give me the answer. You told me from Nunbez to Nundalad that Mashiach has to be Menachaim. Right. In fact, when everybody else was was asking questions, why does it have to be the Lubavitcher Rebbe? Why can it be David Amilch? Right. Why can Mashiach be be right. be, be uh, you know the Baal Shem Tiv? No, nope, it has to be from our generation, Minachaim, 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 right? Right. And then without Skipping a beat. a beat. Yeah. You suddenly flip the whole. No, <laughs> no, no. Not minachayim. Minachayim doesn't mean minachayim. Right. Nerag means not nerag. It's not nerag. It's that. And to me, as a, it was before my bar mitzvah. Then see, I, the whole thing just. It, it was not just confusing. I felt it wasn't. You're not being. You're not being honest. You're being disingenuous. You're being disingenuous. And it's like the story of the person who hits a bullseye every time they shoot the arrow. Right. Because wherever they shoot, they draw the target around it. And that's how I feel this whole, this whole subject uh, has, has been and is. And I've had many rational discussions with many rational people right. who, on this camp, and I haven't found satisfactory answers. I haven't. Well, I don't, I don't think there's any camp that has been, that has been totally honest about it. I, like... I I, 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 was younger. Than, I am younger than you. I grew up in Hong Kong, so I was not, I was not as exposed to this as you were. Um, if anything, I came to it a bit later in life when I started. Okay, wait a second. Like, how does this add up, and so on. Um, you know, what you said, what you say is, you know, resonates with me. Obviously, it's, it's. It, but to me, again, I, I kind of look a bit. I, I, I try to look a little bit at the causes of it. You know, are the, were these people? You, know, you, you said these people told us. These these people were parents. These people were telling us to their own children. Yeah. Okay. They want to. Okay. So why would they tell that to their children? Because they believe. No, but, okay. So so some of them believed, or a lot of them believed. We all believe. I believe. One so. second. I think you. I think you have to go deeper. I think. Yeah. I think. Because believe does not mean knowing. It's two different words. If I believe in God or I believe in the Rebbe's words, does not mean that I understand or know exactly what that is. I, I know that God is all understanding. I know that God is the ultimate. Uh, you know, he, uh, what's he's a dynamis. He's a true judge. Yeah. I don't understand everything he does. Yeah. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know how it's going to pan out. Right. Right. That's also the definition of bitachin. There's a certain trust. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so how did we go from believing to knowing? And I would think, and obviously this is only part of it, it's only it's a simplification, but I would think that part of it is that there's there, 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 there crept up in our community a need for certainty, a, confu a, a conflation of 
belief with certainty. Like you said, Ali Gleibin, Ali Vizin. Like if you're a Hasid, you have to believe. And if, you're, if you believe, you have to know. And it's like, wait a second. Belief is itself complicated. You can have a struggle with belief. Yes, deep, deep down, there's an Amunotaira, but as it bubbles to the surface, it gets complicated. And there are moments of doubt, and there are moments of panic, and there are moments of confusion, there are moments of darkness that's human. And even if you believe, that doesn't mean you know. There are many layers here. And we try to just compress it all into, if you're a chassid, therefore you believe, therefore you know. Mm -hmm. And then you end up with these crazy distortions where like, if if you believe that the Rebbe, like the Rebbe has to, that Mashiach has to come before the Rebbe passes away, you're gonna you're gonna rationalize it that way. And the second it changes the other direction, you're gonna rationalize it a different way. And you're gonna tell your kid two opposite things on two different days of the same week, because you feel that your job as a parent of this child who you're raising to be a chassid is to convey certainty to him or to her. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. That's not true. I feel that the job is to convey a to convey a to convey a sense of what belief really is, which is belief in the face of uncertainty. I believe even though I don't know, even though I'm not sure, even if it doesn't work out the way I thought it would yeah. work out, yeah. I still believe. Yeah. And this is why I believe. Right. And I'm a chassid even though, and by the way, you could say even deeper, maybe it's important to also tell your kids why I'm a chassid even though I don't believe right now. If you're at that place, I'm not saying you should right. be in that place, but if you're in a place where you don't believe, you could also be a chassid. And you could also be trying to figure it out. Yeah. Right? Why is only David Chase allowed to be a chassid, even though he doesn't believe? He didn't keep Shabbos, as far as I remember, or other people like that. Why is only he allowed to be a chassid that way? Why can't I be a chassid that way? Because he had a nice suit, a good tie. No, you're being too cynical. Shit. No. no. <laughs> well, come on, we always gave credence to the, to the to businessman. The, no, not to the businessman. <laughs> Whether it was the businessman that gave, had a lot of money, whether it was the the, 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 the the hippie that came with the long hair, whether it's the motorcycle guy with the tattoos, him we have all the love in the world for. But for Lubavitcher who's struggling over there, ugh, you know. Right. There, there, now, that's changing. And a lot of it is changing. But there was a culture, there's, and it still um, um, seeps through many times, is this guy, there's there's something, he's a fakrunta, he's... There's something wrong with him. There's something. Yeah. And we have less patience for him. And this is an age-old yeah. issue with the college town, a small college town. There's a young man <laughs> feeling down. Yeah. He's feeling down, and the shliach has patience for him all the night. But in the other song, where a small <laughs> cup of wine, Mendel, Mendel's told, basically, you know, after all, it's to me that the Rebbe would speak. Come here, Geja kid. We're going to bring you back into the fold. He met his best friend. He told him, my, lie, my, my, my lies have come to an end. All you other chukchuks can go back to Schenectady and wherever you come from because we don't care about you. <laughs> Mendel is back in the fold. He's back on the bleachers. And, and, and we're good to go. You get where I'm going with this? You get where I'm going? The songs, the camp songs, they are... They deserve to be studied. They deserve to be studied because underneath them, yeah. There's deep messages. Right. You're also taking these kids that are sitting in the sun for two and a half hours and, and shoving a coke in front of them, saying, "Or ices, you know, ice pops." Scream your eyes, scream your 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 lungs out, and then something. But it, it's effective. Yeah, but look, I, I think it, oh, to me at least, look, I I sometimes like to find patterns and things, so I kind of keep on coming back to the same thing. It's not all the same thing. You're obviously not repeating yourself here, but I feel like to me it constantly comes back to. You know, what makes you confident in the next generation? What makes you feel like you've passed on the torch to the next generation? That you, you know, I, I've been thinking about it recently. You know, like when you, a lot of times the idea is you pass a torch, you pass yeah, a candle. The baton. Okay. No, but baton's different. A torch, you're passing a flame, essentially. Yeah. Okay. When you pass, a, a flame by definition is not guaranteed to... You know, to I said baton, by the way. Why? Moshe Brisky wrote a, 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 a speech like, I don't know, 20 years ago for the Olympics. And 95% of Shluchim out there in the United States have gave that, given that speech about passing the baton. I think I gave it twice uh, each right. year of the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm talking, about passing, I'm talking about passing the flame. Why? Because a flame is not guaranteed. Even the flame that you're passing could go out any minute. That's what you're giving over, man. That's what you're giving over. You're giving over something that is fragile. That's why you have to give so much care to it. If it wasn't fragile, if it was just a baton where you just pass it over, 
then then it's less of a problem. It's if but baton in a way is like a certainty. Here's this thing, this it's certainty, protect it and take it out. No, no, no. I'm giving you something that I can't even assure will survive as long as I hold it, let alone when you hold it. But I'm still giving it to you because it's your responsibility to hold on to it and to and to yeah. protect it and to and to and to preserve it and try your best to 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 preserve it and give it over to the next generation. That's and that's what makes the half deal. I know it's uh, there there's there's issues with uh, you know there's there's issues with the Zara in it, but you know the famous kind of run with the torch to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. What's the whole chap? The chap is that the same flame that started yes. over there and over there. What's what's a vart? Because a flame to to take a flame from one place to another is a massive thing. So and so in our analogy though, we are we are one second in our analogy. So we also have a story of the flame, right. and that's the story of. What is a chassid? Yeah. Right. What's wrong with that? No, it's an it's an amazing. I'm saying because, what, how because does that how does that go against? No, no, no. no. I'm saying it, right. each one, but to to run and light the torch, uh, the marathon across, you know, the the whole uh, right the the, the, the the Greek mythology that goes with that, right? Right. It's a nice story. Lamchernik is a whole. It's 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 you're you're going into uh, deep. Um, you're going into deep self-sacrifice in order to keep that flame going to another person. You're going to dark places. Dark places that doesn't like uncomfortable that, places that doesn't like fire. Yeah, and 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 puts you at the risk of being without your own flame because your flame can go out at any moment. Right, and you're doing it f for the, the the out of recognizing the need to light the fire somewhere yeah. else. Also, understanding that by lighting the fire somewhere else, you're preserving this fire. Yeah, and making it stronger. Right, and so to me, that's what it always comes back to. It comes back to, you know, the, this, you know, what keeps me up at night, or, or I mean, maybe I'm over dramatizing, but yeah, look, there there are a lot of people with a lot of crazy ideas, in my in my opinion, and yeah, I mean, I, I don't like a lot of things that they do. I don't like a lot of things that they do in places that are meaningful and holy to me. I don't like a lot of things they do in the name of someone who is. Who is who is holy to me uh, and sacred to me, but I I, I can't I can't control them. I right? can't I can't. But but I'm saying I like what, what what I'm really concerned about, and this is why I do this podcast out of you know as one thing to alleviate the concern is I I, I don't think that I have certainty to pass on to my children. I also don't think that certainty that I would pass on would last very long. I think they would have questions on it that would be, that would basically destroy it. Like it's, because I don't know what's going to be in their lifetimes. I don't know what's going to be in their growing up and what's going to be the questions that they ask. The questions that we ask are very different than the questions our parents asked and their questions are going to be different, mm -hmm. right? So there's no, there's no certainty here that like, it's all figured out. We have all the answers. It's been figured out 40 years ago. Like somebody told me once, you know, someone told me asking about Lubavitch identity is just out of confusion and narcissism. The, the, the answers have been given 50 years ago. It's irrelevant who said it. I'll tell you after. And it's like, okay, man, have a nice that's, day. That's, that's, that is so out of touch. Of course. With what so many are going of through. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And he was an old. He was an was older, he older. I was about to say, was he older a, than 60? Yeah, but he's a, he's a big talker. He's like a big speaker in the world. Okay. Yeah, but it's also, it's, it's, it's. No, it's also, I think he cannot stare those demons in the face. It's too scary for him. Because he's out of touch. With, with, what a younger, with, with, with what a younger chassid and a, a younger Lubavitcher may be facing. If I want to diagnose him, he is more, I think he... He's yeah, not alone, I, though. I think, he's I think he's checked out. I think at some point in your life, you say, look, for me to open up this can of worms at this stage of my life, which forces me to question a lot of my old assumptions, it's just too uncomfortable. I don't have that much... I don't... I mean, I'm not passing away tomorrow, but I don't have the majority of my life ahead of me. Let me just kind of end off with the way I started kind of thing, right? You know, it's hard enough in our in our age, 30s, 40s, to revisit assumptions that we li grew up with, mm -hmm. even though we have, God willing, decades and decades ahead of us. Yeah. Imagine you have more water under the bridge and less water ahead of you, right? Like, it's harder to revisit assumptions. And so it's easier to just say, no, no, we figured that out. You know, here are the answers. I have it all ready for you. If you don't accept it, that's just because you're a narcissist or a confused soul mm -hmm. or looking for problems. And I assume that even if I have answers, my kids will have different questions by definition, mm -hmm. right? 
I assume that I will have different questions in 10 or 20 years, not just yeah. blaming it on my kids. I'll have different questions tomorrow, right? And so the place I am trying to get to is that, that if I'm a Lubavitcher, a chassid of the Rebbe, that comes from a place that's not dependent on a false sense of certainty and a false sense of, I have all the answers, and there are all the answers, and Lubavitch has all the answers. They have all the questions, we have all the answers, and none of the questions. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, we got plenty of questions, brother. Yeah. <laughs> we have plenty we of have, questions. And, and, and I don't think that to have, to, 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 to question openly, I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with no. it. I think, in fact, it could come to the healthiest place. Look, I, 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 I want to, last night was Lag Bomer. Uh, and I, I went to the oil. Um, a lot of people there. Right. A lot, a lot of people. And I'm not into those who uh, celebrate the wines because uh, the wines vice it shows that Lubavitch left and Lubavitch grows. But I, I, I take notice right. of all these younger people that find it important to come at 1.30, 2 in the morning and stand right. for over an hour right. and reading their mind Lushen. I, I, I'm not cynical to say that they're, 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 you know, these are these are a bunch of law sheep. Right. In a way, that gives me a certain amount of, uh, it's not hope, it's, but there is a certain amount of optimism to say, um, they're, they're, as a group, and again, I, I, there's a struggle between the individual and the group, we're still trying. We're still, we're still striving for uh, a connection. Um, there are many, many, many of us that are striving for connection. That's the antithesis of cynicism. Because if we we're cynical, we wouldn't go. We wouldn't go to the oil. We wouldn't. We wouldn't. None of this would be important to us, right? Right. The fact that we are. How long are we sitting together? Now? Two and a half hours. Wow. <laughs> it feels it feels like a half hour. <laughs> and the fact that we're sitting for two and a half hours together, Ben, if I'm breaking deeply, All right. it, it, it's because it matters. And All I don't right. think you and I are the only ones. No, I think there's a lot it, of people out there. I'll have this and I'll have this. <laughs> no, I, I, again, I don't pretend to 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 know what's going to, on. To know what's going on in another person's heart. But if they're showing up by the oil, right? Uh, and and they're and they're. They're, they're doing the and they're going to the mikvah, and they're writing the pan, and then right. they're, you know, they're, there's, there's, uh, yeah, it, it can't be discounted. It's yeah, not you, discounted. You can't, you can't be discounted. It can't be discounted. And, and there's sometimes a feeling of like, if I have a problem with a group where I feel disen disenfranchised, if I feel disenchanted, I therefore must to kind of, Reject it wholeheartedly. Or, or I must like ask questions on everybody else. If I'm feeling this kind of discomfort, then all these other people must be a bunch of idiots or charlatans or whatever. And I don't... No. That, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I understand that you don't feel that way. No. And, and, I, and, I, and I think, I think that's, it, that's just going in the opposite direction silliness. We're right. like, either everybody has to act in their way or everybody has to act not in their way. That's not how this works. The way it works is that you know, there's a lot. You and I are two individuals. I know, I try to know what's going on in my mind, in my heart. You try, I'm sure, to know what's going on in your mind, in your heart. That's more than enough <laughs> to handle, okay? And and so I'm pushing in the direction that I'm pushing because of who I am and how I grow up and the good things that I've done with my life and the mistakes that I've made. All of that comes together to push in one direction, right? You push in your direction. And everybody pushes in their direction, right? And And the idea that everyone has to somehow end up in the same exact place is a fallacy, in my opinion, right? So they don't have to end up, if I'm questioning, questioning the moment that I'm questioning about the things I'm questioning. And like, there could be a guy, you know, looks exactly like the Mems, as if time is frozen, mm -hmm. and he really believes it, and he's really into it. And to him, the oil, good for him, man. Like, I'm not, that doesn't bother me. It doesn't make me angry. That doesn't make me angry. What, what 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 if anything bothers me it's it's that kind of knee jerk reaction that whenever somebody kind of quote unquote gets out of line people whack him mm -hmm. because that's a sign of a community that's that's uh, a intolerant but more importantly doesn't have much time because if, if you're going to try to hold everybody down that yeah, way it's not going to last it doesn't work. it's not going to work and I I just I don't vibe with that at all nope. uh, okay so that I have a problem with 
But the fact that there are people who find the kind of tried the traditional way of thinking and that these questions that we're talking about today doesn't bother them. Maybe I mean the, the questions they don't have those questions and maybe asking these questions does bother them. Okay, that's you. That that works for you. Good for you. You know, like 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 the. But I think in the end, the goal is to get to a place. I think where we don't see just the truth in our uh, Yiddishkeit, in our uh, relationship to Chassidus and to the Rebbe, but to see the truth in other people's ways as well. And I think that it comes back to the security that one has with his uncertainty. If you are okay with being uncertain and say, look, this is, this is what works for me, this is where I'm at now, then someone else is certain, God bless him, it doesn't bother me. But if I mean, I don't have to. I don't have to make myself certain to fit in with him. Right. But I don't have to convince myself that he's a liar and un- deep, deep down, he's uncertain to to make myself comfortable with myself. We are who we are, right? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the Rebbe was a big man, but I, I don't think he was so big that he basically could be a monolith example for everybody. He was a person. Right and, and and the whole idea of a Rebbe with multiple chassidim, a Rebbe Lashon Yachid, yeah. and chassidim Lashon Rabbim is that the Rebbe is then interpreted and experienced by multitudes of people, not all doing the same thing, but doing it in diverse ways and experiencing it their own way. That's what chassidus is ultimately, right? And some of those people will be more this way, some people will be more that way, and communicating with each other and 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 have and and, and discussing questions and, and rebutting questions and answering questions and the back and forth is ultimately where it's at. The questions that we're talking about here today, the 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 shyla of uncertainty, you know, the question can Lubavitch identity coexist with uncertainty? Can you have a Lubavitch identity when you are uncertain about your Lubav- about about so many things that Lubavitch stands for? Does that work? Is that possible? It, you know, is that these questions, what does Lubavitch look like? What's the future of Lubavitch? Are you sure about it? Do you have to be sure? Can you be uncertain? Can you be open? All these questions are not talked about, not, 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 not sanctioned in public discourse. And then we're talking about these morons that are acting like crazy people while all of this, it's not them. They're a problem. Right. They're, the, they're a problem. But the real problem, in my opinion... Yeah, but the, again, again it's, a, it's a symptom of what you're saying. So this has, It's an extreme symptom, yep. and it's not one... Which is insignificant, but because I feel with what you're saying is what I hear from a lot of people. It's not part of the No, 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 no. That's what I've been hearing for thirty years. I'm not saying that. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that though qualitatively they are in the sense that, in the sense that if you have a symptom of an, if you have a symptom of a disease, right, you can you can cover over the disease, but you have to go to the root if you want to if you want to cure it. Okay, the root of the issue, the root it's of the issue, the root of the issue is no. It, Can we be with that? Let me ask you a question. It, it, let's, it, let's let's get into something for a second. I know we're, we're going way over, but I, yeah. Okay, well, let's try to wrap it up because I can tell you got to You got to right. There's there's the, the Gemara says. Now, I'm in no rush personally. It's just I mean, I, the episodes I want to keep with. Okay. Us. <laughs> the, the Gemara says ain't simcha. Right. Katoras asfekus. Right. Right. There's a certain right. joy which I, I I think we've all experienced when you have a a problem right. that you're grappling with, and now suddenly you have clarity. Right. Oh, it's there's a relief. Right. You feel like a burden has been lifted. Right. You right. feel lighter. We've right. we've experienced that. You've experienced that. Right. We've all experienced that. Do you think that if only somehow we will become, we'll do more, we'll learn more, we'll dive in more, we'll we'll learn more chassidus, we'll give an extra extra dosage of of the, just throw ourselves even deeper, the Sveikas will be lifted or no? Like if somehow we'll become... I don't... I, don't, I mean... I, the Sveikas will go away? I don't think that's how... I don't think that's how this works. Yeah, I, I mean think that's how this works. I, I, I just wanted to put it and, out and, and, I, and I don't think... Look, I think some people maybe they struggle with it more. But yeah, I mean, this kind of impulse like Suffolk, Malash and Amalek, and like if you have a Suffolk, then you're just... You're, you're just watching too much TV yes. or whatever. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know... I mean, is YouTube ruining the Lubavitch? Because I mean, it was, it was, you can get right, no, block, you, COL is ruining you, the you, Lubavitch. You, 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 one second, one second. I, I just want to remember how many things ruined. Is, is Macha Khorban Lubavitch? First of all, was blogs. You remember blogs? Yeah. So blogs are killing Lubavitch. Then Facebook was killing Lubavitch. Then WhatsApp is killing Lubavitch. And then YouTube, right? So what are, what's the next thing now? TikTok? Lubavitch is killing Lubavitch. <laughs> 
I, I just I, I think I think I think I think I think I think there will always be questions. I think that I think that I think there were always questions before Gimel Tamos. That's what I, that's my feeling. That's my feeling, and uh, for some reason there's this, kind of, there's this kind of grand cover up. And I watch my encounter yeah. with the Rebbe, yeah. which I like very much. And right. I, I helped. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't help launch it, but I years and years ago I pushed Yechiel Kagan and right. I tried to give him whatever money I could at the right. time was pennies. Right. But I love that idea of gathering right. the, the the stories. Right. I love that idea, and I and also I watched the clock ticking. This is about ten years after Gimel Thomas. Right. And I I kept telling. Yechiel and, and talking to Elkanah a little bit like, yeah. we're losing Chassidim. We right. gotta get and when my grandparents and Emma's passed away, right. I felt also very, um, I felt like we had a loss because each one of them had had a, a lot of stories. Uh -huh. um, but when I watch that, you're, we're not hearing about the great doubts. We're hearing about everything so, being cemented. Because it all goes back to a narrative that when the Rebbe was here, everything was resolved. Everything was taken care of. And in some ways, it was. In some ways, at least on the surface, it was. But my gut is, not only my gut, I, I know plenty of stories, and everybody knows plenty of stories, where people that lived in those times, like if you go a bit deeper, no, there were fakes and there were questions, and there were people that were leaving, and there were people that that didn't leave but wanted to leave, and then and there are people that asked and didn't listen, there were people that didn't ask. Like, there were people, people were living their lives, people... Just yesterday, somebody was telling me about, you know, his uncle in Carnites growing up who had a terrible, terrible marriage and, you know, just terrible, you know, he just suffered tremendously, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that story didn't get resolved. You know, it, he passed away before Chavzai and other. Like, okay. like, 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 they say, but, but we have projected this, this, this idea that before Gimel Tamos, everything was answered, everything made sense. And after Gimel Tamos, nothing makes sense. And both of those things are incorrect. Not everything made sense before then, and not and and not and it's not nothing makes sense today, right? But in those days, it seems at least retro, you know the way the narrative that's been painted is that when the Rebbe was here, ultimately there was a sense that, you know, if if he's fine, I'm fine, kind mm -hmm. of thing. And I, you know, what Gimel Tamos did was disabused us of that notion. And that's ultimately, I think, what the Rebbeim explained about histalkus also. That, like, histalkus is, it's a very painful moment when you realize that, that, that it's not on the Rebbe, it's on you. Right? The Rebbe is going to grow spiritually, but the question is, are you also going to grow spiritually? Mm. Right? You can no longer say that if the Rebbe is fine, I'm fine. No, if I'm fine, the Rebbe is fine. It's completely inverted. That's what histalkus is in many ways. Right? And, and, and so... I, I, I think I think in many ways in many ways there was there, there, there's this there's this kind of misconception about then that has led us to try to chase that kind of certainty you know like when you have a good year in business or a good fundraising year mm -hmm. the next year the whole year you're chasing that year yeah right when really it's a mistake because nothing ever replicates itself anomaly. what's that that was the anomaly or, or it, it, not so as an anomaly, but nothing replicates itself. Like the reason last year happened better than the year before is because it wasn't like the year before, right? And the reason this year would be even better or, or even just as good is because it's also not the same. Nothing replicates itself exactly, right? If you, the entropy will always, the world will always, if something tries to stay stable, the world will destroy it. You have to grow, you have to move forward, right? And so I think we're trying to replicate this, 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 mate, this kind of construed idea of certainty and everything if the Rebbe is fine I'm fine and I don't think it's I, I don't think that's the era we live in I think it's more if I'm fine the Rebbe is fine right and and that puts a lot of weight on each of us that, that and you know you have to be able to decide at some point are you able to live with that knowing that you're, you're not always going to be right and you're going to make yeah. mistakes oh but that the Rebbe will be my Rebbe and I will be as chassid despite making the mistakes. That's the point. That's that's an important distinction because I think a lot of that, a lot of what, tell me if I'm wrong, if you didn't hear this either, a lot of the messages that I've gotten out of my brain is if you make a mistake, then somehow you're 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 no longer fit. That's all from the same. That's all, that's all from the same place. Okay, I, but I, but but I'm saying if the rebbe is a real rebbe, right? I one of the most powerful stories that I. Um, that I cherish 
and that I've embedded in my neshama is the story with the Alter Rebbe when he, um, Simchas Terah, the Tsar's soldiers came to arrest Alter Rebbe. Shmuel Munkus. And he ran out the back door and he went to Shmuel Munkus' house and he says, what should I do? Right. What do I do? Right. So Shmuel Munkus told him, if you're a real Rebbe, nothing's going to happen to you. You're going to be okay. Right. And if you are putting on a show, right. if you're doing all this, right, for ulterior motives, right, then the, the Chassidish guys say dot, 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 and I'm going to say you deserve a bullet in your head because that's a story. We have to stop dot, dot, dot. <laughs> he said that. That's what he told the, the, the Alter Rebbe. Right. You deserve a bullet in your head, right. which is really chutzpahdik and really sharp, but right. the Alter Rebbe accepted it and right. calmly went back home. To me, what do I take from that story? What do you take? If a Rebbe is a real Rebbe, Rosh B'nai Yisrael, if my neshama is connected to the Rebbe's neshama for real, right. then that connection is real warts and all. With my sveikis, with my, with, my, with my grappling, with all the, 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 the things that I contend with, my imperfections, Right. Yeah. The fact that I didn't go to mikveh today. Right. The fact that I missed chitas today. The fact that I wasn't careful today not to talk lashon hara. The talk. The fact that I didn't do all the things. Right. That uh, that that in the fabrings they tell us. You know, if you don't. Right. No. You're still my rebbe. And now I'm going to go into you know another the, the idea that for me I always look at the rebbe. And again, this could be. Uh, but I I take I take the story a little bit differently. Why did the Alter Rebbe need to hear that for Shmuel Munkus? I don't know, because he had Sveikas. Yeah, so I, I mean, is it because... Is it because... So we will have 300 years later, you and I can sit around no, no, and tell no, no, the story. No, 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 I wasn't going to go there. Alter was no, in no. fear. No, no, no. Okay, so, so the Alter Rebbe... He had was, a moment of fear. What, yeah. what, what? The Alter Rebbe had a suffix, or you could say that the Alter Rebbe needed to hear what a Rebbe meant, not only to him, oh, okay. but what it meant to a Chassid. So right. now that I say that, that, now I'm doubting myself. Maybe the Alter Rebbe didn't happen. But the fact that I no, say, no, no, no. But I'm saying uh, the same Alter Rebbe stopped the boat. I'm not saying it's wrong. Alter Rebbe, but I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying that what if the Rebbe, Alter Rebbe needed to hear from a Chassid that if you are a Rebbe, like if you aren't, a, like if you are a Rebbe, you have nothing to fear. And if you aren't a Rebbe, then then you you made our lives miserable. But like, uh, you know, and 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 and, and uh, you know, how you talking? But but I hate me, that word, by the way. But I right, right, no, yeah, dirty word that no, I but I'm, I'm saying I'm saying the, no, no, the, I got, I got it. Like, like, like you, the Alter Rebbe hears from from a from 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 a chassid that this is that 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 a Rebbe is a real thing. A Rebbe comes with demands, and that the demands that a chassid feels from the Rebbe are not justified unless this man is in fact a Rebbe. In which case, there's nothing to fear, right? But all of this is one thing when it's in the in the Rebbe's mind, a concept, you know, the, the, in the truth. Amit Sinyanim, that's what a Rebbe is. But when you hear it from a Chassid, even though Shmuel Mokas, of course, was 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 a was a very exalted Chassid yeah. himself. But you know, what did the Rebbe mean to him? This is this is the early days of what a, you know Rebbe Chassid relationship. Yeah, before there was the Baal Shem Tev, but I think there was more the Baal Shem Tev and his Talmidim, who themselves were Rebbeim, like. You know, or tzaddikim. Like this was the first. This was the beginning of the Lubavitch model of a Rebbe and a Chassid. I know other Chassidim also, but you know, in Chabad model of Rebbe and a Chassid. This is the early days, and it's coming under fire now that the Alter Rebbe is being, you know, um, threatened with imprisonment, which they understand. The Alter Rebbe understands to be a spiritual kitzur. Yeah. And the question is, not just what's the Rebbe according to Chassidus. What's the Rebbe according to a Chassid? Well, you know, right? What's a Rebbe according to a chassid? And, and Shmuel Munkus is saying that a Rebbe according to a chassid is someone who makes such demands that if he did not completely justify making those demands, he deserves you know, a terrible yeah. a terrible end. Now, I, I don't think that's... So it, how does that fit into this conversation? I, I brought up to say right. that the fact that we're having this conversation, again, and this is my opinion, this is the right. way that I see things, the fact that we, we, we each one of us, deal with our, uh, our imperfections, right. deal with our, our shortcomings, deal with where we fall very short, and some of us very short, right. in, 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 in living up to the Rebbe's expectations or what the Rebbe set, set out to do. Right. 
unlike many of the Fabrengans that I heard, where basically you should bury your head in shame and don't ever show your face here again. And how dare you go with your chazer shepanim in front of the Rebbe. And the, 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 the. It's another form of, 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 of abuse in its own way. So now you, Mr. Mashmi, are trying to block me. And, 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 and in certain places it's worked. Certain times when I was a young buffer, I, I, I doubted. All right. How can I go to the, to, to the oil like this? Right. And, I, and, I, and I came with a, sh- a sense of, 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 of shame right. and a sense of like, I don't belong. And, and, and I, I, again, dragging the, that, that image, you're dragging the Rebbe's head in the mud, right? right. It wasn't even said to me. It was right. said to a group of guys that went on Mitzrayim and they, after Mitzrayim, they went to a movie. Okay? And I, I wasn't part of that group. Right. But there was a huge, he found out there was a huge announcement made. I, I, again, was it the right thing that they did? That they right. no, obviously it's not the right thing to do. But you're 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 now painting that any time you step out of line, you're somehow you know. Now I know that the, the, the Tanya writes that you're taking the the the, the king the the. I understand what you're saying. Look, I I understand I understand what you're saying, and everybody I think would would be familiar with this kind of with this kind of language. I do think I do think though that I do think though that um, I I think I think to ra- to to kind of bring it all together, you know, I, I think what you're expressing in many ways, which is legitimate, completely legitimate, and I probably kind of papered over. I also had a much easier time in Yeshiva for what it's worth, you know. I, it's worth expressing this kind of frustration, you know, even if it's not pretty for people to hear. And it's like, oh, why is he going on about it? Okay, look, I don't know. I mean, that's what you're going on about because you're going on about it. But why is it worth putting, you know, why is it worth broadcasting, let's say? Because it's real. It's real. And and, and people, you know, I don't think you'd be doing it if it didn't really bother you on a deep level. Um, but, you know, to, to kind of put a, to kind of title together and end it off with the story of, um, of Shomel Kassanat Reb is that, Look, the, this whole, this whole idea of a Rebbe Chassid is extremely difficult. It's extremely difficult. It's it and it's it's terribly demanding. It's demanding of the Rebbe in ways that we don't know, and it's demanding of a Chassid, right? It's demanding of a Chassid in a way that the way Shmuel Monk is phrased. It, it's really, the, what comes out of what he said is that if you are not truly a Rebbe, like a Rebbe who is the, has access to the ultimate of truth. And you're demanding this from people to basically sacrifice what you're asking them to sacrifice, and to and to and to and to search and go after things in life that they probably will never attain. That is a connection to God on the deepest of levels that will always leave them more thirsty and more hungry. Right? I was just learning that in Kuchus of Mine yesterday, where like with godliness and shum in this world is basically uh, you're basically. Um, doomed to thirst forever yeah. because the more you seek it out <laughs> the, less, the, 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 the more you realize you can't have it yeah. right and so you're you're constantly it's unquenchable thirst right. and so I remember, like I think that's so, why in Tilem it's like such a descriptive right, place right. of how the nisham is not just thirsty but you're in the driest and the parched of the exactly of the, of the, uh, in the barren desert with uh, right with all the elements against and you. that's by design it's by, by design, design. Yeah. And, right and the, I think Shmuel has also told out there about something about you know like that or, or, or maybe it's another chassid that like with in Lubavitch we take away both Gan Eden and Elam Haza you can't have Elam Haza but then you also you're not sure of having yeah, Gan Eden yeah. right so it's a ter- it's a it's a tremendous ask, and it's a very heavy lift to ask of a chassid, right? The idea of being a chassid of Rebbe is a very difficult thing, right? And part of that difficulty, I would argue, is that you're never given complete certainty. You're never, you're never, you're never told, just do X, Y, Z, everything will be all right. Yeah, here, yes, there are brachas, there are things, there, there, here and there, there, but but by and large, on the fundamental questions. You are tasked with with big, big things that will leave you feeling insufficient. That will leave you feeling uh, small. That will that will leave you feeling that you have doubt. Not that I, it shouldn't be shame, but it will leave you because you're you're being asked to do all to to be do to do something that's very, very big and infinitely big on the truest of levels, 
right? And in a context of post Gimel Tamos, right? To, 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 you're talking about these these challenges and all these things. Look, it's not supposed to be easy by design. Is my point? It's not supposed to be easy. And we're looking for shortcuts of, oh, if we can only come up with certainty, if we can only come up with this very straightforward answer, it'll all be all right. No, it won't be, because it can't yeah. be. It's by design. This was by design. Yeah. This is by design. It always was this way. It was this way with Shmuel Munkus and Alter Rebbe. It's this way till today. It's a feature, not a bug. This is this is what this is what so Lebav I'm, 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 I'm In my own life, I'm getting there. I'm worked very hard that I haven't been cheated. Out of out of the experience that my father had, that I that I wasn't cheated out of the experience that the older Bachram that I had, but it still comes back at times, and sometimes right. it, it it comes like a boomerang to the head, and it hits hard and it hits to the gut. Like you hear these, you know, Rosh Hashanah with the Tkiyas never was there. I was I was right. some Hastari, I was there, but there were a lot of experience I never saw. Right. And then when I hear the people talking about it with such the the, the love and all that. It's it's an internal work to deal with that with the pain of saying I never had that. Um, it's not that that hasn't been true to my experience, and yet be okay with that. To not say okay somehow somewhere, you know God cursed our generation and is just playing kickball with us as a generation. No, no, he, he, this he is, is part of design and it's part of the. And the challenge is also part of design to the extent that if the Rebbe wasn't who we believe him to be, there would be no reason at all to expect us to go along with it. Or to, if we didn't believe Chassidus to be what it is, there would be no reason or justification for us to go along with it. But I think in many ways, the reason why people with big questions still hold on. Other than Gebrooks, because Gebrooks is a <laughs> lot of fun. Yeah. No, Pesach and Lubavitch is so much fun. How could you give that yeah, up? That's another no? podcast. It's so much fun. <laughs> it brooks with the shruya. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's man. all worth it. No. Look, okay, there's a lot of great things. Yeah. A lot of great things. But I think there, I think fundament, I think fundamentally, on a, a serious note, I think the reason that a lot of people with big questions still hold on and don't throw the baby out with the bathwater is because they sense that there's something very big here that that can't be, you know, I don't know if so, so much that can't be found elsewhere. There's something very big here. And I don't want to just leave it. I don't I don't want to just leave it. I don't want to leave it behind. There's something here. That's the I, essence. That's it. I love now this I story. Can, I, I can't leave it behind. Right. I can't. Why? Because it's big. It's it's bigger than me, but my soul is enmeshed with with this. Because it's big. It's, it's not just because I was born into it. I question this all the time. Why? Right. Why is it so important to me? Right. Because ultimately there's a sense of emiss. Right. And not just a sense, but there, the, here lies the evidence. And I'm, I'm digging for it. I want it. Right. Right. Oftentimes it seems to elude me. Right. And oftentimes things are really, really, really confusing and painful. Right. But the emiss is still there. Right. And, and if the emiss is there, then the sacrifice and the uncertainty and the discomfort that comes along with looking for it is justified. And that's the only reason it's justified. Yeah. And Tal <laughs> All right, this, is, this has been a lot of fun. This was longer great. than usual. All right. And, uh, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Benson. Thank you. The music for this podcast comes from the album Repentance Doors by Oren Sor Nadav Bachar and is used with their permission.